сборы, все турниры, которые будут проводить Лига ГМС, эти дети будут посещать совершенно бесплатно. Спасибо вам.
группы А. Роман Непада! Роман Непада! I'll be today your English commentator. We have our first fight, Roman Nipota, local Ukrainian rising star, against uh, Bruno Bor Borges from uh, Portugal. Oh, one second, guys. All right, so just so letting you know, guys, it's an eight minute submission only fight. Um, there is no points. The illegal submission rules are like IBJF black belt and brown belt. As you can see right now, Raman Nipote working on his way to the triangle. Very nice position. Right on, good action from the beginning. Let's see, he's trying, he has like a high guard, trying to connect the triangle. Bruno Borg is doing good job defending. Here we go. Yes. A really tight position. It's really important right now not to make a mistake and not to make a mistake for either gu for either guys. Really tight position. You can't be. You can't lose. Neither attacking, or you cannot make mistake when you're defending, because obviously you're gonna be choke. Let's see. Just remind you guys, if the fight doesn't end up finishing submission, we have EBI overtime. We are live TMS here in Kiev, Ukraine. 16 man bracket. The winner, first place, take cash $3,000. Second place is 2000 And the third place is 1000 So this guy is going to be fighting for the gold. By the way, guys, this is my first time working as a commentator. So please be patient with me. <laughs> I'm a white belt commentator right now. Black belt in jiu-jitsu, but white belt commentator. The guys are staying patient. It's really important right now not to make mistake. Roman Nipote getting tighter triangle. He needs to lock it tighter and get the hand of his opponent to the other side. Oh, it's getting tight. It's getting tight a little bit, but think is I think Bruno's doing still have some room to breathe. 
Oh, now it's getting even more tighter. Nice, good switch of the triangle. It's a really smart thing. If Roman can twist the head to the side, I think he can make the triangle really tight. And it's getting tight right now. I think Bruno is in trouble right now. First up. Nice. Submission win. Very nice. Good job by Roman Nipata. He advanced to the semifinals. Here we go. We have a second fight. Bracket A. Tomas Smirnov is from Lithuania fighting against Ruslan Israelov on the right from Kazakhstan top team. Ruslan right away tried to pull the fl flying armbar. Pulling guard to the armbar. Right away good action in the beginning. Tomas trying to pass guard on the knees. He's trying to find his way to pin his opponent. Ruslan doing a good job bringing the shin, defending the guard, trying to go for a guillotine. Nice, fast beginning of the fight. Ruslan on the bottom representing Kazakhstan top team trying to keep the De La Hiva hook probably going for the Kayatera footlock but fighter from Lithuania doing good job defending trying to pass standing yeah, nice knee cut attempt now Ruslan going inverted kind of like get a crab right coming up nice but there's no points so now he's gonna try to pass and get more advanced in a good position Nice, nice sweep right there. Didn't work out fully. Armbar attempt. Close guard. So far, really good action. I like how this guy's fighting. Really entertaining. Hopefully, we get submission in a nice attempt by Smirnovas on the bottom. He's trying to go for the shoulder.
time. Just to remind you guys, in this tournament, you do get negative points. If you get neg first negative point, it's going to be just a verbal. Once you get second one, you start in a turtle position. So far, nobody got negative points. The guys are doing pretty good job staying active, staying busy. Um, this fight's going to be eight minutes long. And if it's draw, if there's no one submitting each other, if no submission, then we'll go to the EBI overtime. So we're going to end up at this with submission at the end. Or a nice scramble. Ruslan is trying to open close guard. Thomas is trying to stay tight, not to lose close guard. But... gonna go for for the spin yes he, he's going inverted but Ruslan shut it down go double under trying to pass nice attempt might gonna be good opening for scramble good job guys doing really good job like fighting non-stop so far really entertaining fight even though you're not really getting like a a lot of submission attempt, but the guys are really trying. Good thing both are not stalling. This is the most important thing in jiu-jitsu. When the two guys are stalling, then we don't, we don't like to watch this fight. So these guys doing trying to keep it up. Okay. First half of the match is almost done. Nice pass by Ruslan. The, the person on top, again, reminding you, is representing Kazakhstan top team. And the guy on the bottom is Thomas Mirnovas from Lithuania. Both are very tough. Fighting really hard to get that gold. Ruslan trying to hold that side control, keeping the position tight so he can connect to submission. Neon belly, probably gonna try to spin to the other side. He's either trying to get an armbar or a Kimura grip. Let's see how they can. Either he can advance or Thomas can use this opportunity giving space and recover the guard. Very good battle right here. Opa. Trying to get the neck. Nice job by controlling by Ruslan. Fighter from Kazakhstan tip, doing really good job controlling the position and staying active. If he doesn't do a lot of mo oh, nice Nice guard retention by Thomas. And the fight continues. All right, we have 2 minutes 40 seconds left. Both guys are getting a little bit tired. Reverse to Lahiva. Thomas is trying to get under legs. Nice, uh, nice knee bar attempt by Ruslan. And connecting to 50-50. No, not 50-50, uh, coming up, escape. Was almost ripping position, but ripping is not allowed here. So, if you do ripping, you might get DQ, so guys, gotta be careful. Two minutes left, guys. Pretty interesting fight, a lot of action. Nice attempt by Ruslan to pass the guard. Thomas doing good job defending. Good guard retention. A little bit frustration from Ruslan because um, it's getting difficult when you're trying to pass. It's really hard to pass the guard in no gi, and once you pass it and you get a side control and you lose it, and it gets really frustrated. So would be really smart from the competitors try to use passing to get advanced to to get like a turtle position to get the back. And then from the back would be easier to control and submit the guy. Nice pressure by Ruslan. He's going 
standing position, the knee cut attempt, Thomas doing a good job defending. Really nice technical jiu-jitsu by these two young, gen young gentlemen. 55 seconds left. Let's see if we get to the overtime. Reminding you, in the overtime there's going to be a coin thrown and the guy's going to choose either armbar position or seat belt position from the back. Whoever submits his opponent faster wins. If not, they're going to go to the second round and whoever escaped first going to win. So it's going to be pretty exciting. So let's see. Probably not much time left to finish by submission, but let's see if the guy can surprise us. Nikat attempt by Ruslan. Ten seconds left. Time probably gonna run out and we're gonna go to the overtime. Looks like the buzz a little bit delayed. Alright. The red the full time is finished. The main Time is finished and we're gonna go to the overtime. Let's see. Let's see what the guy's gonna choose. So, looks like Ruslan made his decision. Let's see how the coin falls. So, Thomas Mirno is gonna start with the seat belt position. He chose the back position and let's see. Now, his goal to submit as fast as he can. He's going for the cross face. Nice. He doesn't have the hand on the chin, but he's smashing the chin. It's really tough on Ruslan. He needs to grab that hand behind his uh, Thomas hand, but yes, he's, he needs to go that grab that hand and bring it forward to his, to release the pressure. And he goes belly down. Belly down is not the position where you want to end up. He's staying tough and tap out. Nice job by Thomas. Now it looks like can see on the score how how fast uh, Thomas submitted Ruslan but reminding you guys that he needs to submit him faster than Thomas submitted him and he almost out he can connect to the armbar not to lose the position but oh right here nice attempt nice attempt maybe can get a choke there but I don't think it looks tight escape all right guys we have a winner so a fighter from Lithuania Thomas Mirnos advanced to the semifinals Really good fight. I really like how both of these athletes show good performance. Um, but unfortunately, only one can go forward. So, Good job, guys. Really entertaining fight. Looking forward to see the next one.
Alright guys, we are starting the third match of Group A. We have Max Nidoshek representing 10 Planet Jiu-Jitsu. He's a brown belt from Eddie Bravo from Russia, fighting against Tough Kasparov Strazis. He's from Lithuania. Um, right away, gets intense fight. Max Nidoshek on top. He really likes to go for, for leg locks. But he used to fight in heel hooks, so he needs to be really careful not to, not to get disqualified um, going for for legs and not to make like mistakes on um, on the illegal submissions but so far nice good knee bar attempt from honey hole position and really fast win by max in the shack great job um, his opponent is very tough but he was able to play his game and max got the fast submission so far guys very interesting fights yeah. tune in if you just tune in we already have three matches. We have last match left for Group A bracket. Really cool fight so far. Very entertaining. Guys, we have a fourth match of the bracket A. Sar Shemish representing Soul Fighter Israel, fighting Mateus Luna from Checkmat USA, L representing Lucas Lechi Checkmat. Um, I'm gonna try to be as less biased as I can because Mateus, Mateus Luna is my friend. So here we go. Sar Shemish probably gonna try to go for leg locks. Mateus is really good at passing guards and getting the the guillotine chokes from standing or from the top. He's really good at, he's probably gonna go for arm triangles as well. So let's see, it should be a really interesting fight. Right now the Atlas decided to fight standing, so our pool guard. And let's see where the fight goes. He's gonna go for a leg lock, like I said. So Mateo's gotta be really careful to scramble out. He's gonna go for Nikat. Mateus really likes to go for the Nikat pass. He's really good. Him and his brother. Again, you see the Sars going for the leg locks. He's gonna go for those honey hole position. Like I see the fighters from Israel that really like this leg lock position. So they're gonna try to enter the honey hole. Mateus doing good job standing on his feet and he needs to lift his uh, left leg all the time bending. Oh, he got he got caught. He cannot say that, but so far he's doing good. Oh, knee cut right there. Nice defense by Saar. 
Mateus gonna keep going for that knee cut. He's doing a good job passing guard. Mateus is like a beast passing guard. I always train with him. He, his knee cut is on point. Uh, right now his main enemy is a jet lag. So, but let's see. Sar is doing really good job trying to enter the legs, being really like a uh, good using guard rotation. But now Mateus got the connection. He lost it. And now again, another attempt for the leg locks. Mateus going for the back. Nice attempt, but not tight enough to control the position. So far, guys, very good fight. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Very active. Mateus going to go for that knee cut again. Trying to pass, but cannot establish. Really active fight, guys. Really interesting. Stop. Referee is bringing them to the middle. Mateus Luna wearing the Moya brand rush guard and Saar Shemish is on the bottom. Guys, if you just tuned in, um, my name is Saeed Dunkaif. I'm a Jiu Jitsu black belt. I'm a white belt in commentating. <laughs> but I'm your host today. So I'm your English commentator. Oh, nice. Mateus tried to go for submission, but he lost it. Now Saar is right away attacking him with the leg lock attempts. Really interesting fight, guys. Both trying to um, both trying to provoke like more the A games, the A games. So, like I said earlier, Saad really gonna go for the leg locks, and Mateo Sune is more like a smash, pass, guillotine, and uh, gonna gonna be going for those fast transitions and knee cuts, especially knee cuts. Right now, nice escape, and boom again, like lock attempt. Opa, at least go out. So we are four, we have four minutes, 24 seconds left. Referee brings him in the middle. The guy starts 10. Now let's see some wrestling here. If Saar tried to stay standing, I was just gonna say if Saar st starts st standing, Mateus would go for the guillotine. But Saar is doing a really good job trying to get his leg locks. Mateus cannot like establish pass. Here we go, another knee cut attempt. So far, the guys are doing a really good job in showing their a great fight. Nice scramble from leg lock to the back attack. Now, now Mateus attacking. Saar started with the leg lock. Now Mateus taking the back, but it looks like he's about to lose it. But now he's getting tighter. Now it's getting tighter. Nice. So right now, Saar needs to be really careful. He needs to hold that o over shoulder hand. Mateus Luna has really good body triangle. I know this because I've done a lot of specific training with him. Really hard to escape from there. So let's see what's the back defense of Saar. Um, I know these guys really like the EBI overtime, so they're probably training a lot of uh, positional training from the back. But I think Mateus is going to go for that cross fade choke. The mean choke. And here we go. Let's see if Saar can defend it. He He's escaping. Nice escape. Nice escape by Saar. And immediately he gets to the single X position going for the foot lock. Get up, get up, get up. And he needs to get up. Um, Mateus needs to get up. Sorry, guys. Um, in the middle of commentating, I'm trying to coach <laughs> Mateus. Uh, like I said. I'm going to try to be as less biased as possible, but when your friend fighting, it's really hard. <laughs> but I really enjoy how both of these athletes showing their good performance. Saar is doing a very good job showing their tough fight. Um, I'm reminding you, Mateus Luna is a black belt under Lucas Lecce. I, I think Saar Shemish either black belt or still brown belt. So he's really showing like a, like a good performance. Like his, his uh, leg lock entries are pretty good. Now the getting a little bit tired. Both athletes are getting a little bit tired, taking their time. In in my opinion, um, this if this fight goes to the overtime, will be really interesting. So again, Mateus got his n favorite Nika position, but Saris keep doing really good job to to use the guard retention to get out. Mateus has to be really tight on passing. He Gets the pass, but he's not staying tight. 
Nice inverted close guard position by Saar. He's probably going to go for toe holds. Um, you see right there, he's grabbing that toe. Maybe he's going to go knee bar or toe hold. Let's see. Reminding you guys, they can go for the black belt, brown belt submissions. So the heel hooks are not allowed, ripping is not allowed, but toe holds and knee bars are allowed here. Starting 2021, TMS probably gonna start allowing heel hooks and their no kick -off. So Mateus is defending the toe hold. Good job escaping. It was a nice toe hold attempt by Saar. Saar is the guy on the bottom representing Soul Fighters, just in case if you guys just tuned in. Mateus Luna is the one wearing Moya, Moya brand 025 uh, number rush guard. So both are pretty tired. Very intense seven minute fight. We have 40 seconds left. Um, it looks like it's gonna go to the to the overtime. Mateus is really used to fighting like point system and I think that's playing against his um, against him because he you, as you can see he gets like passes but he cannot hold him down so hopefully he can um, capitalize that in a, in a fight and really catch the moment thinking it's really hard when there's adrenaline going and you're fighting there's a crowd there's a lights so oh my god nice attempt by Saar going for the knee bar now coming up uh, it looks like there's time almost ran out and we're gonna go for overtime all right overtime let's see what position they're gonna start in so the coin's gonna be dropped and looks like sar is choosing the position and that would be the back take. Oh no, that's an armbar. Armbar position by Saar Shemish. I'm reminding you guys, if whoever submits his opponent faster, wins this battle. Uh, looks like there's some misunderstanding between the referee and, uh, and the competitors. Mateus Luna getting really good position. In this position, if he can go right away for the like come up bridging on top would be really high chance for him to escape but if Saar is yeah that's what I said he needs to come up nice like two three seconds or four seconds escape by Mateo Luna if he can um, if if he can submit um, his opponent he wins In this position, Mateus really need to keep the the leg that on top of the head. Yeah, that leg, that the right leg. To go for the for the lock. It looks like it's really hard right here to break the grip. Uh, Saar is doing good job defending. Nice. First. So Saar escaped it in 23 seconds. Now. We have a second round. So in second round, whoever escape fast, and if both athletes escape, um, like uh, if, for example, right now they start in the next position at the back. If whoever escape faster wins. Obviously, if one escape, another one submits, he wins too. But right now, Sar has really good body triangle, but he's on the wrong side, so. Mateus has to keep him on this side and hold the over, like, he's got to be careful. Nice, he's escaping, he's escaping, nice. Saar made a mistake putting the body triangle on the, on the bottom. He should have kept it, like, on the other side. So right now, Mateus, Mateus going to attack. And it's probably going to go, my bet, he goes right away for the body triangle. He has really long legs, and he's going to go for the body triangle. Oh, and he got a choke right away. Nice job by Mateus Luna, but good fight by Saar Shemish. He showed really good heart and technique. Really um, surprised me this tournament, like showing his leg lock attempts. Let's go to the bracket B, guys.
right, guys. I don't know if you can hear me because they said my commentating voice only starts when the fight starts. But if you do hear me, we have Kuba Nydik, a uh, competitor from Poland. As we know, po Poland has really like good like uh, jiu-jitsu competitors coming out of there. Uh, and he's fighting against, in my opinion, the favorite of this tournament, Ethan Krelinsten. So on this side of the bracket, definitely Ethan, Ethan is the favorite. He's uh, one of the Danaher students, training with Gordon Ryan and uh, Gary Tonan, Nicky Rudd, and Nicky Ryan as well. So, let's see how this fight goes. He's representing, it says he represents Ren Renzi Gracie Academy. Even though I think they're now gonna have their own gym in Puerto Rico. Alright guys, Kuba Naide from Poland, I think representing Checkmat, and then Ethan Krillinston from Renzo Gracie Academy, Danaher student, John Danaher student, training with Gordon Ryan. Right away, Kuba is going good for submission attempt, Ethan defending. Many people consider Ethan to be favorite of this tournament because he's, he's doing really good in submission only scene. He likes the overtime, um, the rule set. So that's like his home hometown, you know. He's competing first time in Ukraine. But the jet lag not his friend right now. Um, a lot of these guys like uh, who came like from North America is having the the hardest time on like a third day of the jet lag. So let's see how we can perform when you feel sleepy. <laughs> So, so far he's doing a good job doing the folding pass, trying to get the body control, but Kuba is doing a good job bringing the guard back in, but Ethan continues to attack. I was reminding you guys, this is Group B. So far we had four exciting matches. The Group A first round finish. Good um, sweep attempt by Kuba. He's probably gonna try to enter the honey hole position back to the single X. Ethan doing good job killing that heel from the hip. Kuba is going for the footlock again. Ethan's trying to stand. Going for the footlock by Kuba. Ethan has to stand up, so he risks the pressure. Nice, he escaped from the foot. And now he's end up on the bottom. I'm reminding you guys this this is no points here, so it doesn't matter who sweeps, who who passed the guard, who takes the back, it's submission only. Illegal submissions. Uh, like an IBJ black belt, brown belt. So there's no heel hooks, no ripping. Toe holds, knee bars allowed. Nice pass attempt by, a nice pass by Ethan. He's trying to stabilize the control and probably gonna go for the choke. Ethan has really good leg locks and back chokes. But overall, his nogi game is very solid. Nice defend by Kuba. Um, Ethan is probably like one of the smallest guys here. Like this is 83 kilos Grand Prix. So the guys were uh, making weight yesterday, the one day before, the night before. And Ethan was just like with clothes and everything, like 70 something kilos, like 73 or something. So he's really light, but speed is his advantage. And obviously him being experienced in this rule set, um, gonna help him a lot. But like I said, the only, uh, he, I mean, he has to fight tough opponent and he has to fight jet lag. So let's see how he does. He's trying to get that spinning back take. He's going to go one hook in. Nice bottom hook in. He has a good control. Now it looks like this might going to be finished here because knowing Ethan, he has really good back finishes. And it looks like going for it. Okay. Belly down, spin. Kuba defending, but I don't think he's gonna escape this time. It's gonna be really a surprise for me. Like there's now tight choke, but he can just go like smashing the chin. Kuba needs to grab that hand behind the behind his head, and he needs to keep that body lock on the closer to the mat. But right, it looks like he's escaping. Really good job by Kuba. 
but the body triangle is still there. And it's, he needs to move. He needs to control that overhand and go to the to the side of the lock, so he can start putting pressure on that lock and escaping. But Ethan doing good job, keep switching the hooks, trying to go. Probably gonna go right now for the arm bar or trying to lock one of the arms. Um, it looks like he might gonna set up the armbar or just gonna go just straight up the cross face again the back attempt the good thing about body triangle you get really good control but the bad thing about it you still have to fight two hands and chin so I notice a lot of these guys from Renzo Gracie Academy they like to lock the arm and then go like one hand and fighting two hands against one hand and a chin um, I don't know how that position called like straight jacket or something like that. I'm not familiar with the terms but I know it's going to be really hard for Kuba Nidek to escape from this position he was doing really good job like before he got into this position and so far as defense wise he's defending pretty well against the experienced um, grappler like Ethan so he still cannot Ethan cannot get under the chin yet so unless he just go trying to smash the chin but I don't think he really has like a tight threat right now um, I think would be really good for him if he try to lock one of the Kubo's arms and go like one arm choke or like two hand choke we have two minutes 30 seconds left Kubo Naide doing really good job defending and Ethan trying to flat him out again a spin Ethan doing good job keeping his body triangle away from being smashed on the ground as soon as Kuba going to the side where he want to smash the legs he usually switch but right now we got a tap good job by both competitors um, we go to the next round winner is Ethan Krillinston Дамы и господа, в этом награждении дети победу улучшающим приемом со стрельбой и на Крейсер Канада. Guys, we have right now Mitri Babichuk against Roy Dagon. It's really interesting fight because Mitri is like a representing Sambo. He is six-time world champion and fighting against Roy Dagon, representing uh, I believe is a Soul Fighter, Team Soul Fighter Israel. So we're looking for a great fight. Really interesting to see how the uh, Sambo guy, who's a world champion, gonna adapt to the grappling matches. So let's see. Here we are, guys. guys here we go we have we have Dmitry Babichuk with the red rush guard he's a six-time world champion in sambo so he doesn't train grappling in jiu-jitsu he's a purely sambo guy fighting against Roy Dagan from 
Soul Fighter Israel. Really interesting fight to see how the Sambo World Champion can adapt his game of leg locks and throws to the submission only rule set of grappling. Let's see. Nice so arm, like a arm drag takedown attempt. By the way, I want to remind you that uh, Dmitry Babichuk is also like Ethan Kreniston is like one of the lightest guy. He's also like around 70 something kilos. Um, this weight category is 83 kilos the way in day before. So as you can see, he's like way smaller than his opponent. I'm really excited to see how the Sambo specialist can do in a in a submission on the rule set. TMS is doing a really good job like putting up shows like this, especially during the pandemic time. We are six minutes and we have like six minutes, 40 seconds left for this match. So far, the guys trying to play stand up. Both do not want to rush, taking risk to going to the guard. Um, I assume the, the Babichuk uh, from Ukraine the representing Sambo, he's gonna do some flashy jumping moves. Now he did take down and he's gonna go for the straight heel, uh, like, uh, like a footlock for sure. Like they like to do this stuff. But this attempt was shut down. Let's see what they bring. So it's getting interesting now, guys. Right now we're in a half butterfly, half kind of like half guard position. Bobby Chuk on the bottom representing Sambo's defending guard. Roy from Soul, Soul Fighters, past the guard, trying to establish good control. Dmitry Babichuk trying really hard to not let him get a good control. And they're getting reset in the middle. Referee want to bring the competitors in the middle. Um, if you guys just tuned in, guys, your host here, Said Um I'm not Joe Rogan, so don't, <laughs> don't um, like criticize me so hard. This is my first day commentating. Um, pr pretty much white belt in commentating, but I'm gonna try to give you guys good uh, commenting and try to keep you guys entertained. And the main job is for athletes. Me, I'm just doing the talking. So, so right now, Roy is doing a good job trying to hold his side control, but Dmitry Babichuk escaped the guard, tried to have a choke attempt. Kind of like a Nogi Ezekiel choke. Now they're back in action. One on top. Oh, he's trying to get the choke. It's not working. Pass guard attempt and five minutes left. Guys, just reminding you, this is submission only rule set with uh, IBJF black belt, brown belt uh, submissions allowed. So no heel hooks, but tw nice pass by Roy Dagon jumping pass but he needs to do a good job controlling that side control otherwise the, all that work that was done is for nothing again he goes back it's really tiring guys when when the guys pass the guard and if they cannot really get the control or advance to the mount or back position it's really tiring and mentally draining when you work so hard you don't really get points or anything but you know you're working hard for a good position then you're losing and then at the end you know, who has more energy and who has more skills that we're going to go to the overtime with the EBI overtime. Uh, so far, really good uh, fight from Dmitry Babichuk, reminding you that he's fighting uh, with no grappling experience. I mean, no, like, uh, jiu-jitsu experience. So he's pretty much training with the judo and sambo guys. So um, he just gave up mount. So Roy is doing a good job getting the advanced like good position so right now he needs to be really careful um, making sure that he grabbing the head and making sure that one hand is posting for the balance because because Dmitry on the bottom he can explode and go to fall into the close guard so um, Roy has to do a good job like keeping him in the mount and climbing up so he can pin his shoulders and the hands of the of the guy on bottom like 
and uh, to get like an advanced position, maybe force him to turn the back or give up one of the arms. So, but he needs to be careful if like if the guy, like, but looks like the guy on bottom not really trying hard yet, like to to bridge or use the advantage. Like so far, like Roy using two hands, so I think it would be a good opportunity to explode, but. He needs to make sure that both hands working, and whenever Roy is advancing, he needs to he needs to bridge to use the opportunity when the guy on top attacking to escape. But so far, Roy is doing a really good job. Um, there is a bridge attempt by Dmitry, but it was pretty weak. It would be really good if Roy can climb more higher and pin the arms, like by aligning his knees by by opponent's shoulders. It's like a game of patience right now. You make little mistake, you lose all your effort. You have to start from the beginning because again, there's no points, guys. Yes, he's trying to elevate the elbow so he can go and climb higher. But Dmitry Babichuk, the Sambo guy, he's doing a good job like uh, keeping his elbow close to his body. Mm, so Roy is trying to get under. Clearly, his attempt is to get his nice job, but he lost it again. So he's trying to get um, he's trying to get under his elbows and then climb higher so he can pinch the shoulders, and then he will get re like a really like dominant position and mount. Roy doing a good job controlling the head and then using the second free hand to do the attacks and whenever he's probably ready to post that hand to, to balance so he don't lose the mount. So far he's doing a good job controlling. Now he's climbing higher but again he's aligned by the hips of the opponent. He, need, he wants to go higher so whenever Dmitry trying to bridge um, his opponent is not sitting on top of his hip so his bridge won't be as strong. But right now, if he catches like good opportunity and if he bridges to the side, he can fall into the close guard of his opponent. Now it looks like he's setting up the triangle. Like Roy is trying to set up the triangle, the mount triangle. He needs to clear the arm and then throw his uh, tie over the over the head, so he get opportunity. But now it's opportunity for Dmitry to really go for the for the bridge. Nice triangle attempt by his. Nice. It looks like we're not going to see submission in the main time, and we're going to go to the overtime. There's the Ezekiel choke attempt, but I don't, I don't know if he's going to get I don't think he's going to get it right now. So nice job by both of them. Good. So this match is more like a control and defend. Good job by Babichuk stepping in and going against uh, jiu-jitsu fighters and trying to trying to test himself, being like 36 years old and fighting against younger guys. Respect. Now let's see what they have. The Sambo guy probably going to go for the arm. He's going to choose the arm position, the armor position, because they're so good at attacking the arms. Someone on the side. So it's gonna go armbar position. He has a really good chance of finishing. Jiu-jitsu guy. The armbars is a is a home alley for Sambo guys. So let's see. It's slippery. It's a very high chance, and it's gonna be strong. Once he takes the hand out, he's gonna go for the kill. Doing good job, keeping his legs crossed. Some people prefer not cross. I think cross leg is good. Um, and now it looks like he might gonna. He's doing a good job keeping his right foot on the head of Roy. He can't grab the short. Oh, nice! He grab. It looks like he's gonna. He's gonna lose it. It looks like him. Oh no no no! He got. Nice, very entertaining. It looks like he's going to get it. Let's see. Let's see. Nice defense, nice fight, but nice escape by Roy. Oh my God, what a, what a nice exchange. 55 seconds. 
It took 55 seconds to escape for Roy Dagan. Now it's his chance to attack. It's really cool, guys. I'm enjoying these fights. I hope you do enjoy it too. So far, there's no disappointment, no stalling. All the guys are showing good heart, good uh, submission attacks, submission defense. This is what jiu-jitsu is about. It's not about some um, bullshit stalling, you know. The guys are really giving it, trying to fight. Um, sorry if I'm being a little bit unprofessional, but I hope you guys understand. Uh, as we see a little bit, Roy Dagan, like, um, um, hurt his nose a little bit and he'll get back into action so if he submits right now Dmitry Babichuk he's gonna start in the armor position and if he submits him he wins the match but if it's not we go for the round two with the back take attacks so let's see let's see how the Sambo expert can escape the armbar position they should have pretty good defense and for sure they're tough as they come. All right. Starting to position. Referee need to make sure that everything correct. Now, here we go. Let's see. It looks like he's gonna escape already. No, I don't see him submitting him from this position. Mm. Should bend his hand, in my opinion. The Sambo guy is keeping his right hand extended, which I don't think is a good idea. But it looks like he is probably gonna escape from there. No, it's not his. I'm confused. There's so many hands. Um, I, I think is slowly escaping. Uh, Sambo expert most likely gonna escape this. It's gonna be really hard to finish from here. As I said, yes, he escaped, and it took him 40 seconds to escape. But guys, we go to the next round. The fight is still on. Now it's a back tip. Now I think Jiu-Jitsu guy, Roy Dagan, going to have more advantage of finishing. But let's see. Let's see how the Sambo specialist can use the back position without using the gi. But he's crossing his legs. And that could be a good opportunity for Roy to go footlock, footlocking his legs. I don't know if he's, he knows it. Or maybe, you know, he won't tap to the suplex. Let's see. Um, it looks like, it looks like that uh, Sambo Specials, who, whose uh, his name is Dmitry Babichuk, um, he doesn't really have like a good, like a back, um, like control. He's using a lot of strength. Not so much efficient, but um, still in the fight. Definitely tough. Um, but let's see the, sub the, the defense skills of Roy Dagan. Bottom hook is out. He's on his way to escape. If he keeps escaping his feet, he's going to be almost 80% out. Um, right now, the Sambo specialist doesn't really uh, show any threat. If he can kill that top leg and escape. If Roy can escape, he's, he beat the bottom hook already, so he, he's already like uh, on his way to escape. And here we go, escape. So one minute, eight seconds. So if Roy Dagan submits him before one minute, eight seconds, he wins. If Sambo specialist Dmitry Babichuk can stay longer defending his back, more than eight mi uh, one minute, eight seconds, he wins. So really exciting right now, guys. Let's see who is the winner. Let's see who's gonna win. Start in the seat belt position. Let's go. Body triangle. And it looks like Roy Dagan gonna keep him flat. It's not a good position to be belly down in this position. And that's it, it looks like it's gonna be a choke. Um, no, he didn't get uh, didn't get a tap. But Dmitry Babichuk should not stay belly down, in my opinion, because it's a really bad spot. He can Roy can flat him out and just simply choke him out, being flat out. I really don't like staying like a turtle in this position. So, but it looks like he feels pretty comfortable there. And now they're scrambling to the side. 
Roy's attacking. It looks like it's a face mash. Again, guys, it's 50 seconds, 51 seconds. If he can stay like 20 seconds longer, uh, Sambo Special is going to win this match. Uh, actually, I'm a little bit confused. I think if, if uh, Roy can hold him longer, he wins. I think Roy, Roy won. So, sorry guys, I'm a little bit jet lag. I only had two hours of sleep. So, Roy Dagen uh, had longer control and he wins. If uh, Dmitry Babichu, the Sambo Specialist, if he would have escaped faster than one minute, eight seconds, he would have won. So, Roy Dagen, Soul Fighters representative, uh, beat Dmitry Babichuk, but really good fight. Uh, respect for Dmitry for stepping up with a, you know, no like grappling, like jujitsu grappling experience, and just going with the sambo and and fighting on a jujitsu jujitsu mats. So it's really really cool. And we are going next to the next fight, guys. All right, guys, we are back in uh, match number three from bracket B. We have Murtaz Ali, Murtaz Ali with the blue um, compressive pants, with the bold guy, fighting against Pedro Cadet from Portugal. Murtaz Ali is fighting from Kyrgyzstan, originally born in Dagestan. So right now he's uh, end up pulling guard to the single X position. Pedro is doing a good job keeping the heel off. Guys, this is the third match of bracket B. We have two more matches left. A nice footlock attempt by Murtaz Ali. Um, so far, no disappointment. Really good matches, guys. A lot of exciting matches. Uh, we're almost on our way to the semifinal. We have two matches left. I am Said Dunkai, your host today, English commentator. Hopefully, you don't guys, you don't criticize me too much. <laughs> Um, commenting on two hours of sleep and jet lag so I'm going to try to do my best to keep it fun for you guys watching and talk some stuff and commentate I'm like, it's my beginning of commentary career <laughs> so hopefully I can deliver so we are one minute and a half in in this match it's eight minute match submission only um, Murtaz Ali is playing guard um, Pedro is like 21 years old Murtaz Ali I believe is like uh, fighting master tournaments and um, it's really tough like good wrestling and overall like old school game like fighting on the knees but good leg locks um, so far fighters like competitors trying to be really careful like uh, 
open guard position and let's see let's see how it goes so far we had really good matches i hope you guys enjoying it if you just tuned in guys we are live in kiev ukraine tms grand prix 16 main bracket winner gets three thousand um, dollars oh nice flying armbar attempt but was blocked by murtazali Pedro was a little bit uh, bad timing or jumping but nice attempt um, needs to be less hesitation but let's see nice as I said guys we are live in Ukraine Kiev um, this is the closing tournament for TMS TMS had good run of like open tournaments this year and it's usually at the end they try to run like a like a super fight type of Grand Prix tournament like we have right now um, last year I was competing in a wall-to-wall -wall tournament um, this time I'm a I'm a commentator <laughs> so didn't have like a good preparation due to like a lot of stuff that's going on in the world right now but I'm enjoying these fights watching with you guys and um, let's see we have like a we have like footlock attempt right here by Murtazali Pedro needs to keep the pressure up he needs to keep the pressure on the foot if he keeps laying there and it gets tight um, unless he has flexible foot he might get tapped out but he needs to stand up and put pressure on the foot so Murtazali cannot like um, um, have like a tight lock on the joint but so far it doesn't look like he put so much trouble on Pedro um, trying to fight Pedro is coming from Portugal um, I'm not sure what team he represents but um, Murtazali is fighting from Kazakhstan top team I believe someone's phone ringing sorry guys so we have three minutes 50 seconds left if there is no submission in the main time we're gonna go to the overtime the EBI overtime armbar attempt by Murtazali is trying to get under armbar attempt is trying to get armbar and Pedro getting good job locking the leg but straight back to the character footlock now Murtazali trying to now I'm gonna try to play on top referee brings him in the middle so far this fight is like um, very like strategic you know the guys don't want to take risks so much um, they're trying to catch like a good moment Murtazali bringing his knee in inside the close guard so he's probably gonna open the close guard and, and he's falling down for the footlock reminding you guys we have toe holds allowed oh he's going for the toe hold but he needs to bend the knee we have now he go almost back to the 50 50 where he lost it we have black belt brown belt ibgf submissions rules so submissions are allowed like black belt and brown belts but there's no points so you have to keep your game and make sure you don't waste so much energy just fighting like for passing and stuff unless you want to get like a dominant position oh nice Portazali jumps in for the footlock and he's gonna try to go belly down pedro needs to come up but it looks like he's pretty comfortable there with um, staying keeping his hip on the ground mm, looks like he's one of those guys who have flexible feet and uh, nice attempt by murtazali trying to go belly down but it doesn't look like it oh nice now nice uh, he now it's looking dangerous guys uh, Pedro really needs to keep his hip up so he releases the pressure from the foot um, and like I said it looks like this guy is really flexible on his foot um, 1 minute 45 seconds left single X we're going back and forth sweep footlock so far this is like footlock sh shootout it's like wild wild west but with footlocks <laughs> Um, Murtazali doing good job keeping the weight on the foot he's trying to scramble out now it's Pedro's attacking but nice scramble out and so far it looked like we might go to the overtime but anything can happen there's still time left 1 minute 15 seconds left 
um, kind of Pedro kind of trying to get the same situation, like same footlock attempt, like like Murtazali was doing him. So they are really going at it, like back and forth, guys. Mm -hmm. Now they're going back in. We have one minute left. Let's see. The cool thing about overtime rule here, if the guys don't get like a submission in the main time, we get to see like we still almost get to see like good um, submission attacks and like. Uh, there's more chances to, for us to see submission. Either we get armbar position or on the back position. Pedro tur turns like belly down. Murtazali is trying to get like a headlock. And let's see what he wants to do. He wants to maybe connect to the choke. It looks like he kind of want to get like Anaconda or Dars. I always get confused which one is Anaconda or which one is Dars, but they're like almost similar submission but right now he's getting the kind of like a gable grip has one underhook under the armpit and another one keeping on the back of the head but doesn't look like it's gonna end up with the submission because the time is almost run out so my bet we're gonna see the overtime okay time finish we are going to overtime Guys, right now there's gonna be a coin, coin toss or throne, how you say in English, sorry. English is not my first language. And looks like Murtazali won and he's gonna choose the position. Let's see what he chose. It's either armbar or back. Looks like he chose the seat belt position. I love seat belt position, so let's see. Let's see how long Pedro can defend or can Murtazali submit him? That would be interesting. Murtazali, Murtazali has the back of Pedro Cadet. And we are in overtime, guys. TMS Grand Prix, Kiev, Ukraine. Let's go. We are 25 seconds in. And looks like he's almost escaped. Pedro escaped in 27 seconds, guys. Good job by Pedro Cadet. Now it's his turn to attack the back. If he gets a submission, he wins. If not, we are going to the second round of overtime. Mm, I think Murtazali gonna do. Good. It's gonna be hard to submit him, but he's doing a good job defending. It looks like he's almost out. Yeah, once his shoulders are on the mat, it, it, you almost lock. Pedro has lost the back. Yes. Once the shoulders are on the mat, it's really hard to recover the back. He, Pedro should have focused on the shoulder that close to him and try to dig under and either get the lock on the arm, forcing his opponent chest not to look up, but look down on the mat. But Murtazeli was doing a good job defending. And now we are in armbar shootout. So start in the armbar, they crossed, Murtazeli crossed the legs. And now let's see. Armbar attempt and looks like close. Okay, it took 12 seconds for Pedro escape from the armbar. If Murtazali uh, can escape faster, he wins. If not faster, he loses. So, so he has six seconds left. If Murtazali can escape, it uh, looks like. It's not. Looks like Pedro got it. All right. So we have a winner. Pedro Cadet is the winner because he um, he escaped in 12 seconds, and Murtazeli took him longer time. So so Pedro Cadet is in the semifinals. But good strategic strate strategic fight, and we are into the last fight of the. Uh, quarterfinal.
All right, guys, we are here in the last fight of the quarterfinals. We have on the left Mohammed Ahmad Zada representing uh, Azerbaijan, and on the right, the one who's on top wearing white rush guard is Vlad Yarashuk representing Ukraine. So, this is the last fight of the quarterfinals. All other guys are already in the semifinals, and we see who gets to go in the semifinal. Or actually, is it semifinal? I'm confused. Um, semifinal or quarterfinal? Kind of confused right now, but we'll figure it out. Don't worry. If it's quarterfinals after this, it's even better. More fights to watch. Oh yeah, actually, so this is not the quarterfinal. This is one eighth of the final. So we have most of the guys going to the quarterfinal, and this is the last fight of the first round. And um, so far, it's good action. We have eight minutes submission only. So far, we have six minutes forty seconds left. Ahmad, Ahmad Zada, Muhammad Ahmad Zada on the bottom representing Azerbaijan is playing butterfly guard. He, now Vlad is on top, he's trying to pass standing, probably gonna try to pass by timing, using fast timing. Well, looks like so far both those guys trying to stay patient and figure out each other's game. Vlad is accepting to be on the bottom, now both on the bottom. Vlad is trying to pass, falls back into guard, and foot attempt, foot lock attempt by Mohammed Ahmad Zada. Uh, there's reaping, I think. There, oh no, there's no reaping, so a foot lock attempt, he escaped. Vlad escaped. Referee bringing them in the middle. We have five minutes, 30 seconds left, guys. So again, guys, like I said earlier, I said that next is semifinals. That was my mistake. We have still like first round, and the next round would be quarterfinal. So we have a lot of fights still ahead of us. This is the last fight of the first round. So far, so good. Both guys accepting to play on the bottom. Kind of try to play double double guard pull situation here. Maybe a little bit bit in bolo action. Let's see. It looks like both guys going for the for the feet. So Ahmad Zadeh is going for the foot lock. Straight foot lock. Oh, that looked nasty. We got the submission. That look nasty. Oh. Look at it. Yeah, that was good submission. Oh. Down. So the winner is Mohammed Mohammed Ahmad Zada from Azerbaijan. So we have our first winners going to the quarterfinals. And things getting more interesting now. Now we're gonna have, in the group A, we're gonna have Raman Nepota fighting Thomas Mirnovas, and we're gonna have Max Nedashek fighting Mateos Luna. Uh, in the group B, we have Ethan Krellinston fighting Roy Dagan, and Pedro Kadet fighting Muhammad Ahmad Zadeh. So 
looking forward to see these matches. And let's go. These are the belts for the winners for the podium. First place, second place, third place. Let's go to the next round. Alright, someone's asking Alexander Kim. Uh, here and there I'm reading the comment guys in the, in the YouTube. So my name is Said Dunkaev guys. For those who are asking my name. Yeah, like I made mistake earlier saying that it's semi-final, but it's a it's a quarter final now, not semi-final. So even better. More fights like I said. Let's go. We have our first quarter final. Raman Nipoto fighting Thomas Mirnovas. Raman Nipote is from Ukraine, representing ZR Team Ukraine. And Thomas Mirnovas is uh, from Lithuania. Guys, Thomas Mirnovas making his way out on the mats. And we have ourselves a fight. Hey, Matthias. <laughs> um, Matthias writing in the comments. So nice, guys. I'm going to be reading your comments as well. So shout, shout out to Matthias Luna and Alexander Kim. All right. So we have the fight. Roman Nipoto starts on the ground, like starting in a guard. Probably trying to, probably trying, he's playing like one leg inside. Let's see. All right, we're spinning for the back. Roman is jumping for the back, but he can also catch a leg lock in this position. He's going for the leg, but um, Thomas scrambled out. Guys, I need the pen to write down this guy's name. So. <laughs> My I need to memorize all these names, so not an easy job, guys. It looks like it's easy to be commentating from the side when you watch UFC like Joe Rogan, but it looks like it's not easy, guys, so I'm learning it the hard way. <laughs> well, seven minutes left. Um, I think it's, yeah, Roman Nipoto trying to pass guard, um, trying to advance in a good position, so he gets the pass. Let's see if he gets like a good top control. Um, he has a top control. Now he needs to advance the position to to go go further because there's no points here, guys. Only submission. So we have again. The open guard position, Roman Nepota is on top, and Thomas Mirnova is playing guard. We have six minutes left, and let's see. Very, like you can tell now, in round two, guys are being more careful. Round first in first round it was like more loose, and the guys were going like more crazy. But so far, a really nice fight. Raman Nipoto trying to stack Thomas. Um, really uncomfortable position. He's getting the pass, but Thomas turning turtle, and he's he's getting the choke. Raman Nipoto is getting the choke. It's um, looks like it's not tight, but it could be tight because Thomas has his hand um, inside of the biceps. Um, really really close to submitting well let's see mm. Thomas is trying to defend we have five minutes left let's see if Roman can hold this position and without burning his hands out looks like he readjusted to the Dane Gable grip and Thomas doing good job to staying calm and 
trying to take his time to escape. Um, as long as he keeps his hand there on the on the biceps of uh, Rom Roman Nepota, I think he's a little bit safe. But let's see if Roman gonna bring like a tighter adjustments. Oh, now it's getting interesting. Uh, no, not yet. It's hard to see from here. So yeah, Thomas doing great job. He escaped really good job, like um, to defending that choke. That hand on the, on the biceps of, of his opponent like kept him safe from getting submitted. So he needs to stay really cool, composed, and find an opportunity to escape and start facing his opponent by playing guard. Right now, he's just in a defense mode. Raman Nepota on top, doing really good job keeping pressure. We have 3 minutes 45 seconds left. Um, let's see. Looks like this fight can finish by submission because the guys are really going at it. But Thomas is doing good job showing the good skills of defense and not making it easy for for um, Roman Nipota. So Roman is on top, trying to pass guard. We have ourselves an uh, open guard position. Thomas trying to keep his elbow close, staying composed, focused, and remember, guys, there is no points. Submission only, but with time limit. It's eight minute match, but we have two minutes fifty seconds left. Thomas going inverted, recovered the guard, good guard retention. Now Roman trying to smash his legs, trying to long step to the pass, end up on the bottom. Now he's probably gonna try to have the leg lock attempts. You can see a lot of these guys here that really like leg locks. Um Liam Kreliston asked in the comment section when is Ethan fighting? Ethan already won the first match and his next match gonna be against Roy Dagan. Um like in the two fights. Oh yeah, thanks for Alexander Kim, he answered my question. So um but we have two minutes left guys, almost two minutes left and so far the fight is going pretty good. Roman trying to jump for the choke. Not successful yet. Um, so far, Roman here is like an aggressor. You know, he's going, he's going at it. He's trying to submit, but Thomas is doing a good job to defend. <laughs> Let's see. I'm really interesting. If this fight goes to the overtime, how this guy is gonna do? I have a feeling that Thomas is very comfortable in the overtime rule set, but. Roman Nipota is like a like a rising star here in Ukraine. He's more like IBJF um, type of like uh, hi his approach to competition is more like they fight for the point system. So, but it looks like he's doing pretty good for submission only as well. Oh, nice jump for the for the choke. He's gonna try to connect, and looks like he's gonna get it. Let's see if it's tight. Nice. Nice finish by Roman Nipota. He stole the show. That was 45 seconds left. Roman Nipota does beautiful jump for the neck and gets the tight choke and finish. So far, two submissions in a, not in overtime. He finished them during the match, um, showing that he could be a real problem for other competitors. So Roman Nipota now advancing to the semi-final. Now our next fight, we're gonna have Eddie Bravo, uh, brown belt, Max Nidoshak, fighting against Czechmat representative Mateusz Luna. Um, this would be a really interesting fight because Max Nidoshak most likely gonna be just straight up going for the honey hole position. And let's see. Let's see how it goes. 
now we have ourselves a good fight, guys. Max needs a shot from Russia. 10 Planet Jiu Jitsu brown belt under Eddie Bravo. Fighting against Mateus Luna, black belt from Lucas Lecce, uh, representing Team Checkmat. Mateus Luna is more like a gi oriented guy, but he's doing, he can fight in no gi pretty good too. But uh, Max Nidashak, again, most likely gonna be going for the honey hole position. And um, Mateus gonna try to stay away from it and uh, try to do his knee cut position and try to pass and get more advanced position. So let's see, this should be a good fight. Max Nidashak has really high chances to catching the leg, but Mateo Sona can surprise with, a, with advancing the position and finishing with a choke or arm triangle himself. Let's see. Really interesting fight. So, Who can make their game plan better is going to win. So let's go. So the bold guy is Max Nidashak from Russia and Mateo Luna. Um, is Brazilian representing Team US. Nice foot sweep, but it looks like Max is don't mind to get swept. And again, he's going for that honey hole position. Like I said earlier, Max can keep. He's gonna do the only thing. He's just gonna go for the honey hole position. And Mateo's gonna go for the back. Nice job by Mateo's getting twister hook and getting the back, but Max escaped. I feel like Mateo's doing a really good job, like getting the position, but like, like a bad job as getting the control so far like people like escaping so but let's see he has really good attempts and so far like in the previous match um, Saar tried to go for the honey hole position as well and he was unsuccessful let's see if Max able to do that and let's see if Mateus Luna can bring his game and bring the submissions on the table Again, back to the guard. Max gonna go again for that honey hole position, and Mateo's gonna do his knee cut, his favorite knee cut position. Um, leg lock, leg lock attempt. Again, attempt number two, taking the back. Mateo's getting like a half mount. Getting the mount. Um, six minutes, 20 seconds left, guys. Oh, he's gonna go for the. He, Mateo's gonna try to take the arm, make Max look to the side, and try to take his back. At least uh, it looked like in the beginning, beginning like that. So, or maybe he's gonna go for the arm triangle. Okay, he's giving up the foot. And probably he's trying to set up the roll for the back. Because the foot inside, maybe Mateo's gonna try to roll to the back and try to get twister hook and take the back in the same way that he tried to do it first. Or, see that wrist that he's grabbing? Push Max's elbow to the side and get the back. But Max did a good job escaping. And again, now it's gonna be the battle to try to get the honey hole position again. So Mateo's need to do a good defense trying not to get in the honey hole. If he can avoid that, I think he has a high chance of beating Max. Um, he's stepping on the tie of Max Nedeshak, so let's see. Nice pass by Mateus, like, uh, but no advantage or no points. Uh, again, same thing, jumping for the back, but Max doing good job, like not giving the back. Well, let's see if this time Mateus can take it. But it looks like it's not so tight yet. Uh, entering the leg, getting the underhook. It looks like the Mateus is pretty comfortable when the guys are going for the honey hole position. He can defend it really well. Um, so far, Max and Saar is unsuccessful to like uh, propose any danger for, for Mateus in this position. Um, so far, four minutes, 30 seconds left. Uh, Max is now is getting dangerous. He's getting inside, but he needs to be really careful because uh, he's used to the heel hooks, and so he doesn't DQ himself. Mateus again falling for the back, doing the same exact thing fourth time, and 
so far getting only the mount, like half mount from it. Oh, that's the roll that I was talking earlier. I tried to do that. So now it's going to be trying to take the back. He's going to try to push the arm and go for the back. You see how he's placing his right knee behind his back? He's going to either go for the arm triangle. I know he likes to do that. Or he's going to try to take the back. Or maybe he surprises us with something else. But so far, my bet is like he's going to either go for arm triangle or try to take the back. Oh, you see, go knee cut, but I don't think it was a good decision on that end because it's not points here. All right. If they stay standing, I think Mateo's going to go for that standing guillotine. Let's see. He's in training, he does that really good. So now Max is trying. Uh, Max is going to try to go for a, like a like a jumping to the leg. You know how ten planet guys like to do, like Garrett Onan style. He's going to try to go do that. That's my guess. We're just going to pull guard. I don't think he wants to wrestle. I think he wants to stay on the feet to jump in the legs. Three minutes left. Um, Mateus has to be really careful with the legs because... Max gonna jump in the legs. That's my bet. But Max need to keep his neck also like a check because Mateos like to do those guillotines. But he's pretty he's pretty tall. Max is pretty tall, so it'd be hard to get that neck. So now it's pretty interesting. Mateos pull guard. Got in a 50-50 position. Max going for the foot, but right now pressure is tight. He's gonna he's gonna push Max's legs to the side. It's not not good position for Max right now. If Mateos can smash those legs to the side he's gonna pass the guard and it looks like that's where we're going but good foot defense right there mm, two minutes left um, still uh, legs are locked on the side really interesting fight guys like very like both guys are trying to play their game and both are so far unsuccessful, but Mateo's gonna pass guard right now. There's a good opportunity to take the back, but he needs to place his chest on the back of his opponent. He's not doing that right now. He's trying to go for the Kimura grip or Neon Bele, and again, oh man, back to the same position. Mm, we know already now that Max gonna go for the same thing for the honey hole position, attacking that leg. And we got ourselves the same situation, taking the back. These guys are keep repeating the same thing that they're doing until someone gets successful or until we get overtime. Now is a good uh, opportunity to take the back, but it looks like referee going to stop. Oh, nice. So that's the position that Mateus likes. Um, yeah, Max and Re like in danger right here. Let's see what's his back defense skills. Mateo's got body triangle. He has 40 minutes left to finish this fight and do not take risks in the overtime. Uh, let's see. He tried to go for the arm. Tried to lock the arm, but unsuccessful. And probably just have to go belly down, cross face. Belly down, cross face. Cross face. Uh, but it looks like he's running out of time. We have 15 seconds left. Max is doing a good job keeping himself safe. Um, looks like we're going to go to the overtime. Five seconds left. I don't see this five fight ending by submission. And, and it's time. All right. Great fight. guys now we have ourselves in the overtime position I think um, Max or Max is choosing the position I don't know choosing the coin they're flipping the coin Mateo's choosing the position looks like he's gonna choose armbar oh no he's choosing the back okay they're starting with the back 
seat belt. Let's see. Now we have overtime from the back position. <laughs> I think this plays more in advance for Max Niedeshek because he's more like a submission only oriented guy and Mateus is more like IBJF point system type of guy but let's see. Mateus has the nice body triangle but the negative thing about body triangle you can hold but you don't really have like a because you the opponent can have two arms to defend so um, it would be nice to block one arm of your opponent with the leg and then if you have long legs to body triangle or just lock it with the hook and then go for you have like two arms against one arm but let's see right now they keep fighting Max is doing a good job defending his back Mateus is trying to put the trying to smash the face with a um, forgot how to say in English. Oh, okay, Mateus is trying to lock the arm. He's probably gonna go trying to lock his right foot over the bicep of my Max, but he gotta be careful because there's a risk. Yeah, he lost it now. So, I wonder how long, how long this time stays. Um, how 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 long they can stay in this position? Because the time is keep going, and um, so far the longest overtime of the day. like Max has uh, good defending skills but he doesn't have any attempt to escape from the body triangle and he can stay here all day if he doesn't go for opening the body triangle unless Mateus decide to open the uh, open the body triangle and go with more like two hooks in like traditional style Let's see. <laughs> In my opinion, Mateo should have focused like just getting like to the side of the underhook and opening the body triangle and trying to lock right now Max's left hand with his left foot and then block him from having like two arms to defend the choke and then it's just gonna be the chin and one arm but right now Max is putting pressure on the body triangle Mateos uh, has pretty good body triangle it's really hard to escape from it but he's like I said blocking himself from um, from having successful attacks either so we got ourselves in we I think it's been like three minutes already since they are fighting from this position in overtime. No one escaped and no one submitted. Uh, we got ourselves like interesting fight. They're rolling out, almost rolling out. Would be nice if Mateus can put his hip forward and flat out Max. Uh, that's what he's trying to do. But again, Max doing good job turning, keeping his chest looking up. And If Mateus doesn't try to do something else like and just keeping the body triangle, I think it's going to take a long time for him to finish. But if he's successful just staying there and he, like, I don't know if the time is unlimited for this round. I think it's unlimited yet. If Mateus can finish him and then escape from the, from the, um, from the back, then he wins. If Max um, 
get submitted and then next round submits Mateus like faster than that it took for Mateus then Max wins so there's a, a lot of excitement here right now it's uncertain who's gonna be the winner the guys are going at it, the referee stopping, and he's going to recenter them to the middle. What happened? I don't understand. Are they bringing it in the middle? I mean, it looks like there's a confusion between the referees. It looked like in the rule meetings, in the rule set, they were saying that there was unlimited time for the first attempt but it looks like there's some kind of misunderstanding over there um, I don't know what the heck is going on sitting a little bit far from the action uh, yesterday I was attending the rules meeting and they said there's uh, unlimited time for the attack, but it looks like they they ha it's not unlimited time. So now they're giving the back for Max Nedeshak. And if he submits Mateos Luna in like... Okay, here's the battle and argument like of the adjustment of the position. So now, now Max has the body triangle and Luna is in a comfortable position. He's, in my opinion, he should go to the right side, to the side of the lock of the body triangle and start putting pressure there and opening the body triangle while he holds this hand that he's holding right now. He's doing a good job and he's going to escape. I think he's going to escape. Maybe not. Mm, looks like he's going to escape from there. But Oh, it's tight. It's on. It's oh, nice. Good job by both of the athletes. R both showed like toughness, and so now we are in the armbar shootout. But it looks like Mateos is like uh, frustrated with the referee's decision, and I do agree with him not being biased because he's my friend and teammate. We were yesterday at a rule meeting and they said it's going to be unlimited uh, time for the first round. So I'm not sure if we understood them wrong. But right now we have armbar attempt. So let's see. 10 seconds in. If All right. It took 14 seconds for Max to escape. If, if he can hold Mateos longer than 14 seconds, he wins. So Mateos has to escape in 14 seconds now if he Mateos doesn't escape faster than 14 seconds he loses so let's see he has to go crazy now Mateos has to go crazy and Max has to keep him tight and at least not to escape let him escape for uh, more than 15 sec 14 seconds oh nice so Mateos advanced to the to the semi-final. He escaped in three seconds. Nice fight, guys. Both of the guys showed hard, good fights. It was really nice, the, 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 the main time limit and the eight minutes. Both guys were trying to play their game. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't that successful, but overall, it was a nice fight. Now, Mateus advanced in the semi-final against Roman Nipota. So, Mateos Luna and Roman Nipota in the semi-final. Ethan Krellinston, one of the favorites of this tournament, fighting against 
Roy Dagan. Ethan is uh, representing Canada. He's from uh, Renzo Gracie uh, Academy um, from Danaher Squad. And uh, Roy Dagan is representing uh, Soul Fighters Israel. So should be a very interesting fight. Ethan is way lighter than his opponent, almost like 10 kilos. Um, we are looking for, uh, we hope it's going to be an exciting fight. All right, guys, we have we have this quarterfinal. Ethan against Roy Dagan. Eight minutes main time. Let's go. Roy is trying to start on the knees. Then stand up, now going back on the knees. Like everyone was talking before the tournament, Ethan is the, probably for most people, is like favorite of this tournament. Most people pick him over others, but ro nice Kimura jump attack from Roy Dagan. So, but you can expect anything here at TMS. Um, submission only, Grand Prix. So far, so good, guys. A lot of exciting fights. If you just tuned in, guys, I'm your host, commentator Saeed Dunkaev, and Jiu Jitsu Black Belt, and like I said earlier, White Belt uh, commentator. <laughs> so, we are live in Kiev, Ukraine. Ethan Krellinson against Roy Dagan. Quarterfinal of the 60 man bracket. TMS Grand Prix. Six minutes, 30 seconds left. We already have like a two semifinals in a group A. That's Roman Nipote from Ukraine fighting against Mateos Luna in, uh, uh, the, uh, from, from USA. Um, Brazilian from the USA, so that's uh, semi-final group A. But right now we have group B trying to figure out who's going to be group B semi-finals. So it's one of these two guys, either Ethan Krellinston or Roy Dagan. So far very competitive match. Ethan trying to play his game. Probably trying to get like uh, to the back or get inside of the legs. <laughs> Unfortunately for Ethan, he doesn't have like his biggest advantage here. It's like having the heel hooks being allowed. But TMS planning to come back in 2021 with a new no gear rules uh, allowing heel hooks. So should be exciting and so far right now the the legal moves here is like IBGF black belt brown belt submissions that's allowed so reaping and uh, heel hooks are not allowed but toe holds and knee bars of course are allowed but heel hooks is not only a weapon that Ethan has he has really good back chokes and overall like a well rounded game can play at top, can play on bottom, but Roy Dagan is showing that he is not going to be an easy mark for you to win, and he might even pull up some surprise win. So let's see. You can see the significant size advantage of Roy Dagan. He pulls the close guard. He's going hooking the leg, open the guard now. Ethan is going to try to pass the guard and force his opponent to turtle and take the back. That's my bet. All right. Nice fast fight. Ethan got himself pass and mount. Now Roy is defending. 
So here things can get worse for for Roy because I know that uh, Danahar students they they do a lot of this positional training. So Ethan is going to be very experienced in this position. He's climbing high. He wants to pinch his shoulders so he can get more like a advanced mount position but Roy knows what he's doing he seems like he knows the defense he's trying to lower his elbows not allowing uh, and catching good timing so but here Ethan might go for the triangle armbar and nice job by Roy Dagan back on the feet it looks like they want some action uh, it looks to me that Roy is a little bit more tired than Ethan which is uh, oh man Got the eye poke, so got the eye poke. All right, keep going. So three minutes left. Ethan is trying hard, shooting, pressuring forward. I think he's trying to kind of like gas out Roy. Um, Got himself a nice takedown. He's following pressure. Following. He's trying to pass. Trying to. It looks like he's really feeling that Roy is like a little bit gassed out, and um, looks like Ethan has more more gas left in the tank. He's gonna force. Let's see what he's trying to do. He's trying to mount or force him to turn and get the back or connect to some. Wow. Now we might have Kimura attempt. Nice job by Roy. He dropped right away. His uh, elbow down. But Ethan is like relentlessly trying to hold and attacking. Nice fight so far, guys. And another attempt by Ethan. He's gonna go for that Kimura lock again. Keeping good pressure, but Roy is doing a really good job. He seems not. It seems like he has this good like defense skills. Ethan is trying to advance in the mount and maybe take the back while he's trying. But right now, neon belly. Good job by Roy. Uh, Ethan's gonna pressure hard because he feel he's, he feels that his opponent is tired. So Ethan wants to use that as advantage going neon belly windshield wiper now trying to connect at the connection of the arm but Roy is doing a good job keeping his elbows tight and staying defensive but Ethan is like relentlessly attacking he might, jo he might go right on. nice job by Roy you see how Ethan is trying to push the pace forward. He, I feel like he's sensing that his opponent is tired and he wants to mentally break him. So far, nice job by Ethan. I'm sure he's uh, confident in uh, overtime, but he wants to get that that submission bonus. Nice takedown. Roy accepted in a close guard. I'm reminding you guys, there's no points. 40 seconds left. Really, really good job by by Roy Dagan, he's showing really good submission skills and now he's been going for the attacks. Nice attack, but Ethan blocks it. Double under, back to the passing guard. A lot of action, guys, this is cool. Now, Ethan trying to pressure the hip, trying to pass, but it looks like it's gonna be, unless he gets something like a fast, snaps out like fast submission, looks like there's 15 seconds left and so far Roy showed that He's not an easy guy to submit. And we probably gonna go to the overtime. It's eight seconds left, open guard, five seconds left, rest the guard, doesn't really matter now, in overtime now. All right, guys. Really nice fight. They're gonna try to choose right now who's getting the, the pick of the position. Looks like Ethan's getting it. And he's choosing what? Or he's choosing the back, right? Let's see. Yes, seatbelt position. Yeah, that's his, one of his favorite positions. And really excited to see how Roy can defend the back because it looks like he, he has really good like defensive skills. Body triangle. And here we go. 
nice job by Roy, but he's trying to stand up. Mm, looks like Roy is knows what he's doing. As long as he doesn't stay like flat, so so Ethan can flat him out. Oh, Ethan's flatting him out now. It's over. I think it's over. It should be over. Yes. Whenever you belly down, and I think it's the like worst position to be flat out. So, but Roy took that risk. Now he has his chance to finish Ethan, and I think would be a really hard uh, mission to do. And it looks like most likely that Ethan gonna advance. But let's see if Roy can surprise us, because so far he showed really good skills. And um, here we go. But I think Ethan gonna escape because oh, nice job by Roy. But but yeah, it's hard to see from here. But I think Ethan is too experienced from this position to get out. Yes, and he get out. Now we have ourselves as uh, Group B semifinalist Ethan Kerlinston representing Canada. John Danaher student, Renzo Gracie team. Or maybe another team now, since they already moved to Puerto Rico and building the gym. So, um, let's see. But right now, it's the Renzo Gracie Team Academy. Good job by Ethan Krenison, and really good job by Roy Dagan fighting the more experienced opponent and giving a good fight. Um, so far, the fans are the winners, so we're getting good fights. guys we have ourselves next fight the winner goes to the semi-final it is Pedro Cadet from Portugal fighting against Mohammed Ahmad Zada from Azerbaijan so here's the entry of Pedro Cadet 21 years old came from Portugal to win that gold medal I mean uh, belt First place, cash prize. And we have the entry of Muhammad Ahmad Zada from Azerbaijan. All right, guys, here we go. Competitor is ready. As far as we've seen, Muhammad Ahmad Zada is showing that his main focus is to get like uh, foot locks in a previous fight. But Pedro also showed that his feet are so flexible and it's really hard to submit him. But let's see what kind of game plan is going to be in this fight. Uh, competitors are focused, it's opening our position. Pedro might try to jump for the arm again if if Mohammed extends his arm forward. Pedro's trying to go on his knees but then change his mind going back on the feet. So seven minutes left. Here we go. Not so much action yet. The guys are being really careful, trying to study each other. I'm sure they watched their previous fights. I'm sure Pedro knows that Mohammed wants to go take his foot home, but Pedro has his plans, so let's see who can deliver. Well, I guess there was some accident here. The guys are going back in the middle. All right, 
six minutes left so far not so much action yet the guys are being really careful with the with putting effort to pass or for submission um, I assume Mohammed's gonna try to get deep under it to go for that straight foot lock and it looks like Pedro just want to be patient and maybe pass the guard and go from there. All right, Mohammed decided to stand up. He's probably going to go pull guard again or maybe try to take uh, his chance by taking his opponent down and passing the guard or maybe Pedro pull ch pulls the guard so let's see yes Pedro decided to pull the guard Mohammed pulls the guard now Pedro goes up Mohammed goes up so we have ourselves pretty much like up and down exercises here so no action yet guys are trying to be really careful like um, a little bit afraid to engage in my opinion but we want some action right <laughs> but everything on the line we understand why the guys are being careful it looks like if they continue doing like this the referee should start giving like penalties for for both guys not really engaging so much um, it's been almost four minutes right now and looks like they want to go for something like one shot looks like Pedro want to do some timing pass or like surprise Muhammad with some move but Muhammad also taking his time not to rush things uh, taking it slow now he's playing on top Pedro is playing guard Looks like we have our, um, in the comment section here, people supporting um, Pedro. So people saying, Bora Cadet. So looks like Pedro has a lot of fans and friends watching the show. Hope you guys enjoy the, the show. Um, so far we have ourselves like uh, this technical, strategic, I would say more strategic, careful fight. Now we got one negative referee decide to give a negative point. No, not it's not negative point. It's like one negative. If he, if the athlete who got the negative, so looks like Muhammad got the negative. If he gets second one, then we're gonna start. They're gonna start like in the third position. Two minute forty five seconds left so far. Not much action. Um, so far it's just pulling guard back and forth one guy pull guard another one pull guard another one gets up another one gets up another one pull guard another one pull guard it's like this so um, but there's a tension here nobody wants to lose the guys want to go in the semi-final right now they they're getting uh, the Muhammad's getting penalty second penalty and we're going to the to the turtle position and now it's an action guys pedro is trying to take the back nice muhammad's trying to escape now now we got ourselves some fight guys if, let's see if pedro can advance here muhammad's doing good job not giving the hooks in and looks like he is gonna escape standing up he's gonna roll over going for the back nice job by muhammad and he's escaping now we're back in the fight, guys. One minute, 45 seconds left. Needs a little bit more action. Looks like the guys want to count and put their cards more like an overtime position. Doesn't looks like doesn't they don't really want to risk like uh, the the main time. But we still have one minute, 20 seconds left. 
to see if someone come out victorious with submission. Samuel Emery Jiu Jitsu says in the comment, why wait for the ref to force you to engage? Come on, boys. I agree with you, Samuel. I agree. We need more action. <laughs> you know how some hardcore, uh, um, like a casual MMA fans, they want blood. We don't want blood, but we want some good action. We don't want no one hurt, but we want to see nice action. 45 seconds left. And um, let's go. Let's see. Hopefully, in overtime, would be more exciting. So far, like uh, both being very careful, um, fans would want to see more action. Um, Muhammad's trying to engage more. Pedro's defending. Back and forth. 20 seconds left. And here we go. I bet we're going to the overtime. It looks like there's 20 seconds left. It's not going to be so much uh, opportunity for the submission. Samuel says, I respect the honest commentary. Well, thank you. We try to be honest. And um, not talking crap on anyone, just just to to say that most people want to see exciting fight and um, but we do understand the side of the competitors because they want to be they don't want to lose they don't want to be eliminated um, and so sometimes fights go to be like uh, more careful and that happens it's normal so as a competitor I can understand that but as a fan I want to see some action so now we have ourselves the armbar shootout Muhammad starts in an armbar position uh, Pedro Melo says um, that it's uh, not much action, but still tactical fight. I agree with you, it's a good tactic. Um, but um, so far, all other fights were really like exciting. But now it's getting more excited. Now Pedro is on his way to escape. Uh, he has high chance to escape here because it looks like he's going to escape, in my opinion. Like uh, it's almost sliding out. Oh, nice, nice, nice scramble. This was nice. All right. So Pedro is doing great job escaping. It was a beautiful escape. Nice attempt by Muhammad. Uh, Bekzad G. Dabey says, so how is now unlimited time for the first? I have no idea. So far, the longest um, the longest uh, submission attack was Mateo Zuna against Max Nidashak, and that was like five minutes or four minutes. So I guess the limit is four or five minutes. Now it's Pedro's attacking, and Muhammad's doing a good job smashing, uh, like uh, smashing him with legs, so keeping Pedro really uncomfortable, pressuring his neck. Now let's see if Pedro can come up with something nice. He he want to swing on a nice. Now, now Pedro is trying. It looks like he's advancing position. It's hard to see from here, but nice job. Nice job by Muhammad. Now this is getting really interesting, guys. So Muhammad escape. Pedro escape. Both guys are showing like a good escaping skills from the armbar now we see the turtle position oh no not turtle the the seat belt position from the back guys can you let me know in the comment section that if you can hear me well like am i keeping my microphone too far or too close or it's fine oh Pedro's doing a nice job killing that overhand, and he's probably going to escape right now. He's on his way to escape. Muhammad needs to bring that right hand behind Pedro's neck, but Pedro's doing a good job escaping. He, he, he is almost escaped. Ah, now he's out. Good job by Cadet. The All right, thank you, Joao Santos. Thank you, guys. Thank you for, um, for the feedback on the microphone. So now it's Pedro attacking the, the back, but it looks like Muhammad is also on his way to escape. He's trying to kill the bottom hook. Now it's 
Yeah, he's almost out. It looks like he's getting out. Wow. And I missed the... I missed the chance. It looks like Muhammad escaped faster and he won. So, uh, good fight, guys. Very technical. Um, concerning technical fight, but at the end was really a nice skill. So, both guys showed that they're hard to submit, but Muhammad was a little bit better. And he's advancing to the semifinal and he's going to face Ethan Cranston. So, it would be interesting to see Ethan Cranston fighting against. Muhammad Ahmad Zada. So that would be interesting. Now, wow, guys, now now would be a good fight. Raman Nipota so far showed that he's the has 100% submission rate in this in this tournament. He finished two of his opponents and not reaching the overtime. He's fighting against Mateos Luna. Reminding you that Roman Nipote is a representative from Ukraine, ZR Team Ukraine. Um, Mateos Luna. Now it's showing up on the screen as representing Brazil. In the beginning, he was like representing US, but either way, he's representing Czech Matt, La Habra, Lucas Lecce. And um, we got a nice fight, guys. I think this one will end like with uh, some fireworks. Both of these guys showed good fights, but Roman Nepota so far, so far showed that he's a finisher. So. Let's see, Mateo Zuna making his walkout. Now we're gonna find out who's gonna be the first finalist. All right guys, Bora, let's go. Slap bump, let's go. Luna's keeping his posture up straight. Roman pulls the guard, he's gonna go for those leg locks. Let's see what Luna can present. Thank you, Samuel. Yes, uh, the organizer doing, did a great job. Um, everything's professional here. Athletes are happy. Looks like everything is uh, on point so far as they treat the athletes and everything. TMS doing a great job keeping the spectators entertained during these hard times that 2020 year took place. <laughs> All right, Roman Nipota had his attempt for the leg lock, like I said earlier. Mateo's gonna go for the passing the guard. Um, the interesting thing that both of these guys are more like IBGF oriented, but it looks like Nipoto is really like a submission, like he, he, he has really good submission skills here. Um, Let's see if Mateus can defend. It looks like there's going to be either a knee bar attempt or toe hold. All right. All right. Uh, oh, my God. Looks like Nipote is putting Mateus in danger. Yeah, the same uh, coach from the side of Mateo saying that Roman Nipoto was pulling the heel, and you can you can tell Mateo was like complaining like while he was attacking Nibar, so he wasn't really worried about Nibar, but he was saying that he's pulling the heel. Um, I know it's really hard to finish like toe hold um, or like like foot lock on Mateo. He it's pretty like um, like strong at defending this stuff, but. Let's see. Juan Lopez Correa, bro, Team Luna. Team Nizam, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Juan Lopez. He's rooting for Mateos Luna, a fanboy. 
Luna Brothers fan, guys, in the comment section. All right, so Mateos has a side control. Let's see what he's trying to do. Uh, Raman is keeping the nip Nipota on the bottom. He He's keeping his frame, like he's pushing the hip away. Um, five minutes left. Mateo's gonna shoot for those knee cuts. He does it very successful, like, but I feel like I feel like he's like um wasting his energy like he like just going for this and and then cannot advance so uh, I hope he can stabilize and we can see a better position and um Raman is doing good job staying composed and um not losing focus and he's always dangerous so he's 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 always you can like as we saw in the last match with like Thomas Mirnovas He's always dangerous. He he can surprise you with some submission. So um, these guys, they they like live and train jujitsu. Like here in Ukraine, they have like perfect opportunity. Like their coach, um, Professor uh, Evgeny Skvirda, he he's like ha gave them such a nice opportunity. They live in the castle. Like they eat, sleep, and train. They have everything. They cook, sleeping area. So these guys just live, breathe jujitsu. Uh, really like a blessing for the yeah, Ukrainian young guys have opportunity and looks like in next couple of generation that like, Ukrainian guys gonna come up with a, in an international Brazilian Jiu Jitsu level like they're gonna come up with a good talent Bas Pisultana wa alaikum asalam Bratan ya na angliskom komentiruju poetamu на русском не могу говорить. Дэл Маршал Хилл. Хуан Пабло Мурило. ИБИ rules. ИБИ overtime rules at the end. So if the fight goes uh, no submission, then it's gonna be overtime. So far, um, so far some leg lock attempts by Roman Nipota. There's a triangle attempt, but Mateo's got it under control. And so far we get like a pass, recovery guard, pass, recovery guard, but pretty entertaining fight still, you know, even though there is no submission. So let's see if the competitors can get the submission before finishing the main time. Um, we have two minutes, 40 seconds left. And uh, Mateo's trying to hold the position. He should really work and try to either force mount or or the back. But so far, unsuccessful. Raman Nepoto is doing a great job. Um, looks like both are a little bit tired, but Raman is want to try to show the pushing the pace. He's pulling guard. It's gonna go again for those leg locks, but so far Mateo shown that the leg locks to lock good leg lock on him is really hard. His long legs and his knowing because I trained with him, like I know that he 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 defended pretty well. So, but everything's possible, and um, you know maybe you slip here and there and and you can lose. But so far. I feel like Roman has to choose like some different strategy, maybe try to go for the back. And for Mateos, he's probably gonna roll for the back right now if if he if he ah he lost it. So now again probably gonna try to pass the guard. But so far unsuccessful because getting to side control and then it's pretty easy to escape when it's slippery and it's no gi. So, one minute, ten seconds left. Oh, they're going in the middle.
Mateo is going to go for that knee cut. He's trying. Pass. But here's the problem. He passed. And he needs to advance from here. But Roman Nipoto is doing good job, like shutting down the ad advancing from this position. And that's really draining for Mateos. You know, he's, he's trying hard and, and then keeps going back. It's mentally draining because you keep passing and you're recovering and keep passing and then recovering. So, but it's also not easy for Roman Nipoto being on the bottom and pushing the whole weight and everything. So, um, again, we're back to the guard. And I don't think that there's going to be any submission here. 20, like 17 seconds left. We probably got ourselves in an overtime battle. Alright guys, we are going to the overtime. Now it's getting very interesting guys because both of these guys are going to go for the kill now. Who will get into the finals? That's a question. Local Ukrainian rising star Roman Nipoto, who's brown belt, or Mateus Luna, who's like fresh black belt, but more like a no, like more gi oriented guy, but showing showing so far that he can fight no gi too. And um, let's see. So far, it's the first um, overtime for Roman Nipoto. He finished two of his opponents. And it's a third overtime for Mateos. Again, body triangle, and let's go. Yes, Samuel, this is semifinals. So far, Mateus has, he's laying on the side of the underhook, blocking the wrist, but Roman is defending pretty good. Now, oh, he almost escaped, but defended pretty good, but Mateus got it back, recovered, so. It's gonna be really hard to submit like with the body triangle. I feel like it's so hard to submit with a body triangle. Like you unless if you go like belly down and and oh Raman Nipata almost escaped but Mateus got it back. So now Mateus has to be careful. He doesn't have underhook or oh he, he he's losing it. He's losing it and he recovers. Nice. Roman Nipoto is doing good job defending. He's almost escaped. He almost escaped. He's do Roman Nipoto is doing really good job defending from the body triangle, but Mateo's got it back. It looks like Roman Nipoto knows how to deal with the body triangle lock. He's having pretty good, like a rolling system here. Almost getting back into close guard, but so far Mateo's was able to shut it down. Right here, if Mateus can make him turn and keep him flat like Ethan did on on Roy Dagan, he can be like like he can he can like flat him out and submit. But so far they're getting out of the boundaries. Probably a referee gonna stop them and reset in the middle. Okay. So far they're letting them go. Yeah. 
if I was in Mateo's corner, I would just scream to to go belly down and flat him out. Exactly the same way how Ethan Krellison did uh, finish um, Roy Dagan. It's a very powerful position, and I feel like Mateo's had the opportunity, but it's not his style. Um, oh, so I guess if you go out of boundaries, I guess if you go out of boundaries, you they stop it. That is so stupid. I don't know why. So it's not the time limit. If you go out of boundaries, that's it. You 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 lost the position. Wow. So it looks like looks like yeah. I I'm really curious, guys. I'm really curious to find out if it's if that's the case. Um, Raman Nipoto. So don't, yeah, you don't want to stay flat, belly down. Mateus Luna should really, oh, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he escaped. Good job for both of the guys. Um, Mateus Luna showed that he can escape fast. Raman Nepola showed that, uh, you know, even though he didn't escape, but because the body triangle is really hard to escape, but he showed that it's hard to submit him. Now we, now we uh, start an armbar. Now, let's see. Mateus Luna is trying hard to submit. Raman Nipot is coming up. It looks like he's gonna escape. Uh, it looks like he's gonna escape because the leg is over. Uh, let's see. Max Ruvinsky representing Czech Matt here in Ukraine, coaching Mateus Luna and ZR team, Evgen Skvirda on the other side, coaching his student, Roman Nipota. Tough situation, very, very like emotional. Um, let's see who gets victorious here. Arms are burning right now probably. A little mistake can cost you opportunity to go in the final. Uh, so, in my opinion, Raman Nipoto has like a good, good position here and chance to escape because he's stepping with that leg over. Well, let's see if Mat Mateus can surprise with some nice pull. So far, so tight. Mm -hmm. Raman Nipoto is showing really good skill like and, and being patient there in the position. He has really good position right there to escape and looks like he's on his way to escape and I feel like he's going to escape right now. Yes, and he did. So now, it's a moment of truth. If Mateus escape faster, if Mateus can escape faster, then Oh, well, what is this? There's not, uh, there's not the rules. You can only have one arm. I feel like they're, they're cheating here a little bit. Oh, nice job. Nice job by Mateo. Sorry, guys. I'm being a little bit biased. Here's my friend fighter, my training partner. I'm glad he won, but good job, Raman Nipote. I'm sure he will come back good. He's a brown belt. Don't forget, guys, showed like a black belt, like a tough fight. And... Um, um, Mateus Luna advances to the final and um, and uh, we are the winners here guys we are getting good fights enjoying the fights I'm sure Raman Nipote will learn from this and he already showed like good skills and stuff so so we have one finalist which is Mateus Luna and 
I don't know if they have a fight for a third place. If they do, most likely Roman Nepote will fight with the loser of the second uh, Group B semifinals. And uh, let's see. Okay, guys. I'm running on two hours sleep, guys. Jet lag, brain is off right now. <laughs> Super tired, but I'm still excited and really enjoying these fights. Um, so hopefully you don't criticize me so much. I'm trying my best to to try to commentate and give you guys good uh, commentary. But um, we we almost there, guys. We almost there. So now we have Ethan Kronenstein against Mohammed Ahmad Zadan. Ethan gonna have the fast pace engaging and Mohammed Ahmad Zadan so far showed he has like a like a patient, more like tactical strategy. So let's see who can come out victorious. Really interesting. Would be a tough fight for Ethan Kronenstein to win and would be a good opportunity for Mohammed Ahmad Zadan to make a Good name by beating more experienced uh, grappler like Ethan. Mohammed Ahmad Zadam making his walkout, representing Azerbaijan. Ethan Karlistan representing Canada. We hear the drums. Exciting. So who is going to be the second finalist, guys? We will find out in a bit. All right, guys. Let's go. So both guys decided to start on the feet. Muhammad Ahmad Zada gonna go for the foot. As I don't know much about his style, but so far I've seen his fights. He looks like he likes to do the straight foot lock. Um, Ethan gonna try to push the pace, get the back, or um, um, he doesn't have like his main favorite submission here is like heel hooks because heel hooks are not allowed but Ethan is overall like very well rounded and like many people here um, think that he's the favorite to win this tournament so far um, my prediction was like I thought Mateo's gonna go in the final and I thought uh, Ethan gonna go in the final and I'm really excited to see the fight um, so let's see how it goes so far um, Muhammad turns turtle when uh, Ethan was trying to pass guard, so there might be a. I was gonna say gonna be a sort of choke attempt, but Muhammad capitalized it and stopped it. And uh, um, let's try to keep it friendly, guys, in the comment section. Um, not disrespecting anybody. Everyone has a chance to win, but like everyone think that most likely Ethan has more chance to win. But that would be that would be a big surprise if if Muhammad can come out as a winner, victorious. He can make a big name for himself, and um, that's a great opportunity for him. So far, Ethan is dominating. He's getting the mount. Mm. Six minutes, ten seconds left. Like I said, I feel like Ethan going to push the pace. Going to try to drain Muhammad and just, you know, not to give a chance to the to the overtime. He probably going to try to go for that. Um, if you get submission in the main time here, you get extra $200 bonus. So I guess Ethan is looking for some extra money to make. <laughs> so 
and just it's nice to finish in general you know like finish in the meantime not giving chance to go and uh, giving like dominant position to your opponent Eden doing great job right now getting the lock he's climbing up um, Muhammad's defending pretty good And um, we have five minutes, 30 seconds left. Um, Ethan is getting good control over the hand. And, uh, Muhammad is pushing back, but you have to be careful extending his arm. Maybe he gives like arm bar opportunity. What happened there? I missed it. Something happened there. Oh, I guess Muhammad was grabbing the rush guard, and it's not allowed to grab, so you can only um, use your hands, like getting like cupping grips or something, you know. But you can't grab it like a gi. So I guess he's getting penalty, and they're gonna start in a third opposition. So now. It's a third opposition for Ethan, and it's a high chance that he can take the back from there. Uh, Muhammad needs to be really careful here, and because um, the game can be over here. Ethan is really good at back finishes. Um, yes, he got the back, but not over yet. Muhammad is doing a good job defending. Ethan brings him to the to bring the 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 lower hook in, now he has fully control of the back. He's gonna try to flat him out with a body triangle. Um, or just straight up finish from there, like you know, with a with a face smash finish. Like, I don't think Muhammad would be like, would tap easily to that unless, unless he gets like a deep choke in. Still, it's not under the chin right now. So, someone asked where is the Nidashak? Nidashak lost to Mateos Luna with uh, overtime, in overtime. So, Ethan right now, if Muhammad stays flat like this, he's going to flat him out. Ethan's going to flat him out and then finish him like he did finish Roy Dagan. Oh, they move to the side. Uh, still, there's no, uh, it's just like a face smash, you know, with a hand, but there's not real choke there. They said Paro, now they're gonna move to the middle. Three minutes, 35 seconds left, guys. Let's see who is our second finalist, guys? Will it be Eden Kredenstein, Ethan Kredenstein, or Muhammad Ahmed Zadar? Let's see. So far, Muhammad is in danger, and it looks like that Ethan um, has like three minutes, 30 seconds to finish the choke, like get the choke and not to lose the back. But Muhammad is doing a good job by keeping his chin, like not letting Ethan's uh, forearm get under, like uh, under his chin. But he's got to be really careful right here. Ethan can flat him out, and that's gonna be worse position to end up with if you get flat out and just can't do nothing and you get choked. But so far, so far, good job by Muhammad defending pretty good. If he can survive this, he has higher chances in overtime. Now, Ethan gonna try to flat him out. Nope, not yet. I guess he can't yet. But I have a feeling that he's gonna go for it. Mm. It's gonna be tough to finish here. But now, like you see, like he's trying, yeah, now he's trying to flat him out, you see? Uh, but Muhammad's doing a good job not staying flat. Muhammad is really doing a good job like not staying flat because it looks like Ethan trying to force him to be flat. 
if once you flats you out that's it from there it would be really hard to roll so Muhammad needs to do a great job to like make sure that he rolls before he loses the balance from the knees if that makes sense if you guys understand what I mean like if he keeps the pressure on the knees if he's standing on his knees like a turtle he's still okay but as long as lo as soon as Ethan drives him forward and he cannot his weight is not on the knees then it would be hard to escape but Muhammad's doing good job like rolling before that happens one minute 40 seconds left um, good defense by Muhammad you see Ethan I'm guarantee you Ethan trying to go like flat him out but Muhammad is understanding that and then as soon as Ethan trying to flat him out he he rolls to the other side and right now yeah Ethan doing great job switching the the body triangle he doesn't want to be with the body lock on the bottom he wants to keep that body lock in the air right now it's on in on the bottom but he's probably going to change it you see you see that body lock is on the bottom unless he wants to flat him out like you see right there he changes it because now it's better control if he keeps that body lock on the bottom oh now he's gonna go for that for my favorite position he's gonna try to lock the arm but so that would be a good thing to do lock the arm es especially you have 40 seconds left so nothing to lose like try to try to go there lock the arm and go like, like for the for the joke but I really like how Muhammad is like um, defending the only thing is like he can't escape that body triangle his Ethan's body triangle is so tight Muhammad cannot um, like uh, find a way like he does a great job not g letting him get under his chin but he cannot like uh, escape from it so thus making him be stuck but in my opinion the overtime is an advantage for uh, Muhammad so he he has a higher chance of um, like uh, winning the match by overtime rather than in in this situation right now so we are going to the overtime let's see what happens Wow, so far Muhammad Ahmad Zada looks like a, like a dark horse of this tournament. If he can pull out beating Ethan, that would be like a crazy upset. And he's choosing right now. I, Muhammad is choosing who he's doing. It looks like he's choosing the, the back attack. But I think it will be really hard to, to finish Ethan. <laughs> Ethan is showing that there's no way that you beat me, man. <laughs> fun, fun, uh, friendly trolling from both of the guys. Uh, Muhammad can pull up some upset here, like if he beats him. But I have a feeling that Ethan is like really good at like. Um, I don't know much about Muhammad's game. But so far, he showed it, like it's very hard to submit, you know. So anything can happen, guys. That would be like a crazy upset if Muhammad wins. So, but also I would not get so surprised because so far he showed that he's really tough to submit, and you know, like he he doesn't he doesn't make it so active, but also doesn't make it like uh, doesn't doesn't give much to the opponent. Looks like a uh, 25th frame uh, wants to throw some like uh, trolling here, huh? <laughs> Dear commentator, what's your rank in BJJ? <laughs> what's your rank in BJJ? So now it would be interesting. The guys are arguing for something. I don't know. I don't know what's really going on. Um, I don't know what's really going on right now. I guess they uh, arguing for the grip. And now it's really interesting, guys. Will Muhammad Ahmad Zada upset and beat the favorite of this tournament? Let's see. 
he can. Wow, Ethan's lifting and escaping. All right. So, unfortunate fall for Muhammad. Um, uh, now we have Ethan attacking the arm. Looks like Muhammad's bleeding a little bit. Um, we need some um, like medics to stop the blood. Yeah, medics are behind me, so I'm kind of like signaling them, hey guys, let's go do your job. Uh. We have a little break here, guys. Twenty-fifth uh, frame. I'm the one-stripe white belt. <laughs> I'm a two-white, two-stripe no, white belt. So, I'm a little bit better than you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm a three-stripe white belt. Yeah, I think I think um, Ahmad Zada is playing uh, like a like a maybe not the nicest game plan but um, he's doing the right thing you know he's taking advantage to take a break and come out fresh maybe he's tired um, I don't think like a nose is like such a big deal but you know you can do you can play with rules you know whatever it costs to win um, as a competitor I can understand him so yeah but I agree that guy looks like wants to recover more um, but it is what it is you know like, oh, it looks like Ethan wins because the, the g something happened to his nose. So they, they, they're making Ethan as a winner. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, I don't know. We are saying that it looks like he's taking time, but maybe something happened. We don't really know. Maybe he broke his nose or something. So hopefully nothing serious for Muhammad Ahmad Zada. He showed really, he showed good heart, you know, uh, fighting. But they say that because he's unable to continue, uh, Ethan Krenniston is continuing to the final. So guys, we have ourselves a final. Ethan Krenniston and Mateo Luna. That's what I predicted in the beginning. Um, I didn't say it in the, here, but the guys who know me, like I've always been saying, like I think these two guys are going to fight. Obviously, uh, both of these guys are my friends. So, um, But Mateo is my... Like, like uh, my training partner and uh, I'm being honest gonna root for him but I just want good fight guys I want good fight I do believe that Ethan is more favorite in this uh, in this matchup um, Muhammad Ahmad Zada is right behind me like I don't know what happened he's just laying behind me mm, looks like something serious I don't know but um, again going back to the match between Mateos and Ethan they uh, they, uh, it's going to be a good match, in my opinion. Ethan is uh, definitely the favorite. Uh, Luna is the uh, dark horse. But anyone can win, guys. Anyone can win. And um, I just hope we, as, a, as the spectators, we get like a good fight and enjoy the show. Matthias, Luna. <laughs> You see, you see, I work with your brother for the back, back attacks and everything, but he doesn't listen. He keep doing that body triangle. <laughs> we have a Matthias Luna here in the comments. Because, um, before we came here to Ukraine, we were training together for the back attacks. And <laughs> but um, you guys are beasts, like Luna brothers. They are beasts. Um, uh, Ethan Kreliston passing by, right here. What's up, bro? Good luck on the final. I have Ethan right here passing by. Um, so it looks like um, Muhammad Ahmad Zada, something, something happened to him. He's still on the bottom, like uh, uh, something. 
they, I mean, he's still on the floor, you know, it doesn't look like the guy's faking it, so. Um, hope uh, nothing serious, because he looks like he's in pain. And it's not about his nose, it's something else, guys. Something. So we are waiting for the final, guys. Uh, for the juniors, uh, they already the jun the little guys they already fought the kids they already fought, so um, guys I'm gonna uh, take a break and come back for for the finals. Um, it looks like we we still don't have the finals here, or maybe let's talk a little bit about. Um, Let's talk about overall the fights that we've seen. So far, we had really good fights, guys, especially uh, bracket uh, A. That was really cool. Uh, Raman Nipoto showed like really good skills, like uh, showing like great fight and losing in a close match against Ma Mateus Luna. Um, uh, also in that bracket, um, I think Max Nidashek showed like a good fight. Uh, especially submitting a uh, tough opponent, Kaspar Strazas, like very quick in 30 seconds and uh, having really like a, like having really like tough fight with Mateus Luna and losing also in close fight. I hear in the back of my, in the back of me, like uh, I guess uh, for Muhammad Ahmad Zada, uh, when he, uh, when uh, Ethan was defending the armbar, he, he fell down and hit his back and head. So it's kind of like um, you know like it's not slam because he was not slamming him he escaped the arm but he injured himself like a neck or something there so he, he something happened like with his head so it's not so much his nose so just giving you update guys and um, to talk about overall like um, we had um, nice fights in the uh, bracket B um, was a good fight by Murtazali Murtazali against Pen Pedro Cadet, and was good fight with. Uh, uh, I really like the how uh, the Sambo guy also like show the heart, you know, came into the Jiu-Jitsu world and tried to, you know, engage and fight, and uh, end up losing, but still, you know, didn't get dominated. So we're waiting, guys, for. Uh, we are waiting for the for the final, guys. Guys, can you can you give me feedback on the, my microphone? Because so far I feel like some like shh, shh, like some kind of fixes in my in my in my uh, headphones. Надо было мне на русском вообще. А, нормально. За кого я болею? Я болею за Матеуса.
guys missed uh, the previous fight, you can always um, go back um, and watch the replay. So if you miss some fights, there's uh, there's some good fights. We have good action. Uh, one second, guys. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying. To oh, by the way, we still have we have a third place match as well, and it's supposed to be Roman Nipota from Ukraine against Mohammed Ahmad Zada from Azerbaijan. But uh, they're trying to figure out if the fight is still on because Ahmad Zada hit his head really hard uh, when Ethan was defending the armbar. So. We'll see if uh, Raman Nipota just gets uh, third place for because uh, Muhammad has no show, or maybe he recovers and go fight. We will find out. So we have two matches left, guys. Third place match and final. Unless if Muhammad is no show, then um, you know, then then Raman Nipota is getting the third place. But. If it's nothing serious with Muhammad, of course he's gonna fight because there's an opportunity for him uh, to make a thousand dollars. The third place is thousand dollars, second place two thousand dollars, and first place three thousand dollars. So um, I don't think he'd be faking it and lose the opportunity to fight and get third place at least. Guys, we're still waiting. All right, guys, looks like we have some action right here. Oh, it looks like Muhammad Ahmad Zada cannot show up because of the, because of um, the injury. He cannot continue, so Raman Nipota is getting third place. So, so right now we have a final, guys. Ram Ethan Kreliston against Mateus Luna.
Oh no, they made mistake here. An answer, unfortunately, make mistake called by Ethan Krelstein win the third place, but well, he was supposed to say Roman Nipota. Things happen, guys. It's okay. Guys, we have Mateus Luna against Ethan Krelliston. There's, there's a little action right here. Looks like Muhammad Ahmad Zadai is really hurt. They're carrying him on the on the on the hands. Looks like he really hurt himself bad. Um, we wish him uh, speedy recovery. It's unfortunate to end up, you know. We had a pretty successful event. Not now, no one get hurt, but it's jujitsu, it's martial arts. Things happen. Wish him speedy recovery. So now we have our final fight. Mateus Luna making his entrance. Entry. He's gonna be wearing a red band. Uh, his opponent, Ethan Krelliston. Let's find out, guys, who's the winner. On paper, it says Ethan is the favorite, but let's see. Mateus can surprise. Mateus can steal the show. But my guess is it's gonna go to overtime. But I can be wrong. All right, here we go. Time, okay. Ethan pulls guard immediately. Uh, guys, reminding you there's no heel hooks allowed here. It's a uh, IBGF. Black belt, brown belt submissions allowed here, but no points. Sub submission only eight minutes and then overtime. Ethan is trying to get under the legs of uh, uh, Mateus, and um, I have a, like a deja vu feeling. It's so weird. Like I feel like I've seen this already, but I know for a fact that I didn't. So Ethan is trying to get under is trying to follow same strategy trying to get Mateos in um, in a kind of like hun honey hole position but so far Mateos showed that he he's pretty good at defending it mm, I haven't seen Ethan trying to do that on other guys I don't know wh why he chose this strategy probably because he see that Mateos is allowing that position to happen too much and He's probably way more experienced in it than other guys. So now, okay, now we have kind of like 50-50 position. And this is where Ethan is very dangerous. He can start going for those um, knee bars. Mm. But Mateus is pretty confident there. Let's see what... Let's see what... Um, Ethan can show their surprise. I feel like if the heel hooks were allowed, like Ethan would be like way more dominant is in this position. But so far, because heel hooks are not allowed, um, I think Mateus is pretty comfortable there. But anything can happen. Now Mateo stand up, he wants to escape his knee, he wants to push the knees down and escape the knee. If he's able to push Ethan's leg down and the knee is free, then he's escaped. And that's what he did. He's, he's out, now we have open guard situation. Mateo's on top, Ethan on bottom. 
you think gonna try to bring that butterfly game in get under get the leg lock position looks like it's gonna be his strategy but I wonder if he is gonna realize that maybe it's hard to submit Mateos in uh, the leg lock position and he's gonna shoot more for the back let's see so far um, Ethan's trying to come up on a single leg shin to shin single leg situation and uh, Ethan is trying to rush the pace. If he can make Mateos tired, maybe he can have success on make uh, m forcing Mateos to make a mistake. But so far, also big size difference. Um, Mateos has size difference, but Ethan has speed difference, and uh, Ethan has like really good condition. It looks like, even though he's jet black, but uh, like. He's scoring pretty strong. All the fights keeping the pace. So we have four minutes, 20 seconds left, guys. Um, this competitor is trying to engage. Um, so far, so far, Ethan was more successful getting under the leg, putting in a 50-50 position and had like some um, leg lock attempts. But now Mateo is going for the toe holds. Oh, now it's 50-50. I'm reminding you guys that reaping is not allowed. We are in a 50-50 position, 3 minutes, 45 seconds left. Now, Ethan is kind of falling back, but he can get like a knee bar position right there. So Mateus has to be really careful. He has to be really careful right there. And Mateus coming up. Ethan probably going to try to get the lock there and either go knee bar or toe hold hmm. we're back in the 50 50 position Mateo is gonna try toe hold but it's not tight enough the leg is straight um, oh it's a little bit danger here but I don't think Ethan gonna tap to that so we're still in the 50 50 referee stopped the fight and brings the guys in the middle Twenty fifth frame says that we need to legalize. You need not legal heel hooks. I know it's dangerous, but you guys need not legal. Heel. I don't know what you meant. If you meant like we need to legalize heel hooks, I spoke earlier that we we uh, the TMS organizers they want to make um, uh, heel hooks allowed in 2021. So, uh, in my opinion, in no gi there should be heel hooks. So why holding back and stopping the progression you know because all the IBGF guys they don't know how to defend heel hooks and it's really bad in my opinion so the heel hook should be allowed for Nogi so TMS is planning to bring it back but right now here in the fight we have 2 minutes 20 seconds left Ethan in a putting Mateos in a bit dangerous situation but Mateos seems fine he's kicking out Ethan getting under so far really interesting fight guys like it looks like both guys been shooting for leg locks. Mateo, Mateo's all of a sudden he's not even going for the guard pass. If you guys noticed before, he was shooting for those knee knee cut passes, but he's doing really smart on this fight. I like the way he fights this fight more because he's not wasting his energy going to pass the guard and then losing the side control. He's waiting, being patient, and letting submission comes to to him. So he's going for the leg locks and it's gonna be tough to catch Ethan in leg lock but um, but it's better than just you know passing the guard and wasting energy and not being able to uh, advance so in my opinion he needs to stay active and look for a nice opportunity like maybe when Ethan comes up go shoot for the arm so far these guys are doing great job. I nice spin by Ethan I mean, these guys are experts, okay? Both both guys know what they're doing, and um, it's a nice jujitsu. Um, time almost passed; it's one minute left. Now I feel like once it gets to the overtime, Ethan is definitely the favorite in overtime because he fights this tournament a lot, like overtime rules. And Mateos is more like IBJF 
type of guy. And now, wow, we have a scramble for the back take. Mateo is Luna in danger right now. We have 44 seconds left. And Ethan has his back. Oh my God. Can he finish before the end? Or Mateus can escape and continue surprising us, like uh, getting like um, the intrigue, keeping the intrigue of this fight. Oh, so they're keeping it standing. All right. So, looks like no much danger. So, referee decided to stand them up. Open guard position, Mateus on top, Ethan on bottom. Mateus trying to go on the knees. Something happened, referee stopped. Now, back in the fight. 20 seconds left. Most likely, we go to the overtime, guys. At this point, I don't see anyone submitting. Uh, no one submitting each other, like, you know. Um, um, five seconds left. And it will be interesting to see how Mateus can do against Ethan in overtime. All right, time, guys. We are going to the overtime. Uh, Leclerc BJJ said that was a bad restart, in his opinion. Maybe, you know. Um, I, I agree. I think, you know, it should not be like you're going for the back and, you know, at least have to bring back the same position. That would be more fair. If I'm not being biased. If I want to be biased, I'd say, oh, good restart, because my, my <laughs> Mateus is my teammate. <laughs> so, but. But we have overtime anyway, so someone's going to lose for sure. So, wow, Mateus decided the armbar position. Let's see if he can pull up the submission. Oh my God, Ethan is almost out, almost out, almost out. Wow, nine seconds. It took nine seconds for Ethan to escape from the armbar. Now if he can submit Mat Mateus, he will win. Or we go in the back take position. Moment of truth, guys. So Ethan is probably thinking that he wants to take the back, but the referee explaining to him if the coin was flipped and Mateus won and he chose the armbar position, that means you have you have to go back in the armbar position. So Ethan's had a little bit misunderstanding. I think in ABI is a little bit different, but um, so let's see. Let's see now. Can he get that armbar? Who's gonna take three thousand dollars? It's tight, guys. It's tight. Hmm. Mateo's doing good job by putting his leg, hooking the arm of Ethan, the he thus helping loosen Ethan's grip, the second hand grip. If Mateo's can come up and s bring the knees of Ethan on his head, he will have a higher chance of escaping, but Ethan staying really tight and triangling the arm. Oh, oh, nice job by Mateos, nice escape. Um, took him longer to escape, but still, there's no winner yet. So now, guys, now it's a back take, and in my opinion, Ethan got this one. So let's see how it goes. I really want Mateus to win. He's my teammate. But let's see if Mateus can surprise on this one. It just Ethan is so good at defending the back and uh, attacking from the back. So let's see. It's very interesting right here. Mateus has really good body triangle. If Mateus can hold that body triangle, he can pull off the victory, by the way. He c if he find a way to choke um, Ethan, but it looks like he's about to out. Oh, that's it. So 
like I said, Ethan trained this rule set, so he has way more experience than Mateos in this rule set of overtime. So they specifically train the EBI rules, like, and um, Mateos is more IBGA focused guy. So um, uh, I think that's why Ethan has more advantage here. And let's see. Can Mateus escape faster than Ethan escape? Mateus giving his heart. Oh. What happened there? Oh, I think. I think either Ethan won or because Mateos went out of boundaries, it counts like escape. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened, but if Mateos won, <laughs> I'm happy because it's my teammate. So, and that would be shocking. I really, I really hope Mateus won. Sorry, guys, for being biased, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm that unprofessional commentator. <laughs> but hey, anyway, whoever wins, both guys showed good fight, and uh, whoever wins, it's, uh, you know, there's no loser here. You know, guys showed good fight. Let's see for the decision. Oh, so it is Ethan. So. It is fair, it is fair in my opinion. So, Ethan, Ethan won, Mateo showed good fight, good heart. Both guys really showed like uh, good matches. I hope you guys enjoyed the tournament. Um, sorry for me being annoying a little bit. And um, like I said, this is my first time commentating. Um, I hope I didn't disappoint. If I did, uh, to be honest with you, I don't really care. <laughs> but uh, hopefully I didn't though. I, I, I would prefer to to be like uh, that that I made you guys a little bit enjoy the show like more giving my feedback. Uh, guys, um, uh, whatever you are, what time is it? Um, either have a great day or have a good night. You know, if you're on, uh, in Europe, have a good night. If you're on, uh, on the West, have a good day. So, guys, hopefully see you in the future TMS events. Go follow TMS League on Instagram. If you want to watch the replay, you can uh, find, uh, you can type in a search TMS Grappling and find the TMS uh, YouTube channel and watch the full fights. And stay tuned, guys. Stay updated for 2021. I'm sure TMS will come out with a lot of exciting stuff. Um, wish everyone... Uh, good uh, prosperity health stay healthy guys you know corona free take care guys i hope you enjoyed it bye bye
Раз, раз, раз. Раз, раз. Итак, уважаемые организаторы, эта информация сейчас специально для вас. Давайте соберемся возле пресс-вола и сделаем э, большое, красивое семейное фото Лиги ТМС. Прямо сейчас каждый, кто имеет э, отношение к сегодняшнему турниру, давайте соберемся возле пресс-вола. Буквально одна минута, я надеюсь на вашу организованность, друзья. Три, раз, два, три, четыре, пять, раз, два, три, четыре, пять, раз, два, три, четыре, пять. Один, два, раз. Раз, два, три. Ситуация мануальная. Мануальный фокус. Спортив, мануальный фокус. Мануальный фокус сейчас я не выполню. Раз, два, три, меня слышно. Все окей. Звук есть. Микрофон работает. Линия есть. Очень крутые впечатления, то есть начиная от организации, заканчивая борьбой, все на очень высоком уровне. Я надеюсь, что в нас в Украине, у нас дома будет масса таких турниров, где мы сможем бороться. Своим выступлением доволен? Сегодняшним выступлением я доволен, я сделал максимум, что смог. То есть все силы я потратил для того, чтобы 
получить победу сегодня. Ну, мой оппонент был немножко лучше меня, немножко проворнее, скажем так, ему повезло. В следующий раз я постараюсь его выиграть. Андрей, а за третье место у тебя не было отвлаки, потому что по состоянию здоровья вылетел твой оппонент. Была ли у тебя какая-то тактика для выхода на формат ВГА? После схватки, после схватки с Матео Луной я максимально настраивался на полуфинал, чтобы забрать третье место. Но в спорте бывает разное, может все произойти все что угодно. Поэтому имеем то, что имеем. Из своих задумок, из своих подготовок на этот турнир, что получилось и есть ли шансы на получение? На самом деле на этот турнир я ничего не думал, я ничего не готовил. То есть я работал в обычном режиме. Если приходила, к примеру, нога, я старался атаковать ногу, приходила рука, старался атаковать руку, приходила шея, старался атаковать шею. Все очень просто. Вот такая тактика. Что ближе было. Я еще пока Жене не разговаривал. Я думаю, скажет, определит какие-то ошибки, мы над ними будем работать дальше. А, окей, я, я должен спросить. Мне, мне надо убегать, и, возможно, мы продолжим это еще интервью, да? Так? Я срочно. Продолжим или уже что-то другое отключили в эфир? Раз, два, три, раз, два, три, четыре, пять, раз, два, три, четыре, пять. Раз, два, три. В следующем году, в 2021, в лиге ТМС будут наконец-таки разрешены хилхуки, не рейпинги. Что об этом думаешь? Хорошо, это плохо, как будешь готовиться? Будем готовиться в обычном режиме, в этом же баре не рейпинг и в случае не опять. Я понял. То есть теперь в твою тактику добавится, пришел не рейпинг, будет не рейпинг, пришел хилхук, будет хилхук, да? Отлично. Самый непосредственный борец Роман Непота. Все, что ломается, будет ломать. Наш тренер всегда нас учит, что тренер должен быть универсален. Не надо быть однобожным. Если добавили правила в случае не пять, будем делать в случае не пять. Ничего страшного. Даже расширим наш арсенал. Это как мало нас будет Окей, okay, круто. Ну что, я думаю, у тебя дофига болельщиков, конечно же, в этом турнире, которые ждут от тебя победы в 2021. Ну и сегодня ты, собственно, показал, что у тебя все для этого есть. Так что, ну мы, собственно, ждем. Буду стараться. Спасибо, ребята, за внимание. Буду стараться. Че, я бы с Максом еще поговорил. Дайте мне Макса. Не до щак! Принесите мне не до щека! Сейчас бегаю за ним. Макс! Макс! Макс, пару слов, пойдем. А, да. По команде? Да, да, да. Угу. Вот сюда, 
Итак, у нас здесь Макс Недощак, главный, неудач... главный мистер потерянные надежды этого турнира. Макс, ну просто впечатление, давай рассказывай. Впечатление, если честно, сейчас я успокоился, самые позитивные впечатления. Все, спасибо организаторам. Ну, когда ты ко мне сел комментировать, у тебя чуть-чуть бомбил да, пердак, да, бомбил, это было заметно, бомбил, да. успокоился, но будем, сделаем выводы, естественно, как сказали все в основном мне, что надо выигрывать в основное время. В основное время будете, будем выигрывать, и не, не будет таких проблем. Так что, ну, вот так вот. Ну, ты свое выступление как сам оцениваешь? А, если честно, я думал, что я сделаю ему ногу. А, но все думали. Все думали. Ну, надо работать. То есть я больше заточен, конечно, на хилхуке, на пятки. Были бы пяточки, то я на ебуму бы сделал. Пяточки будут в 2021 году. Слушай, но прикол в том, на самом деле, что э, кроме Итана к победе над э, жестким Бразилом э, Луной ты был максимально близок. Угу. Оставалось 15 секунд про контроль твоим 14. любимым гриппом. 14, да. 14, да. Вот, и не дали. Ну, ты, я так понимаю, расстроен, конечно. Расстроен, да? конечно. Я очень хотел побороться с, с Непотой. А, я думаю, Непоту бы я выиграл, если честно. Это так Пиши в комменты, если хочешь, замес Непоты против Недощика в Крапивницком, в котором мы вот-вот-вот совсем скоро окажемся, да? Ты же едешь с, с нами. С кайфом за рубли с, с Непоты, он крутой чувак. Все, клево. Мы как минимум, возможно, снимем это для моего канала. Ну а Недощика мы, конечно же, ждем в 2021 году на турнирах ТМС, когда можно будет крутить пяточки, да? Я, я выиграю, я выиграю. А BGGF, Европу. Тоже ж можно. Пяточки можно будет, да? Да, да. Короче, все ждем не до чека в 2021 году. Ты вот сколько ты выступал в 2020 году? Мне кажется, это еще важный вопрос. Немного, немного. У меня очень много семинаров просто было. Mm -hmm. есть, сейчас семинары, и у меня вот каждый семинар это как, как турнир. Ну, это сказалось на, на твоей подготовке, то, а... что ты мало, мало именно соревновательного опыта имел в 2020 году. Нет, нет, у меня вот именно в вот психологическом а, плане все нормально. То есть нет такого, что я горю. Бы, не, психологическое, а в физическом, в подготовке нет, именно. Нет, каждую неделю семинары, каждую неделю я боролся с жесткими гриппами, mm -hmm. и мне все время а, ну, хотели тебя убить просто. Я защищался, атаковал, так что а, нормально все было. Подготовочка. Ну, ну, устал, мне еще сейчас Новый год отдохнем всем. Окей, okay, это был Макс Недощак. Вот такое вот интервью. Ждем, ждем Недощака в 21-м. Ну и, собственно говоря, мы все. Спасибо, друзья. Спасибо, я вижу. Ты вопрос, ну, только так, то так где-то держи. Раз, два, раз, два. Раз, два. One, two, one, two. One, two. Hey guys, we are here with the Hey guys, we are here with the TMS Grand Prix winner, Ethan Krillinston. Hey, how does it feel, man? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. It feels great. Um, what was your 
in general game plan for this year? Were you were you counting for the overtime, or you just were trying to like get one of those extra bonuses? It looked like you were ca you were pushing the base for the extra. Yeah, I was definitely trying to get the submissions. Uh, the guys are a lot stronger, and they're they're very technical, so it's tough to sort of break through in some of the matches. Um, yeah, y none of us want to go to overtime, but you know, if if we can't break through, then that's how it is, and that's how you gotta win. So, tell me, Ethan, like, um, what was your biggest surprise? Um, who who was your biggest surprise? Like, you fighting an opponent, or, or did anyone surprise you, or just everything went like you expected? Uh, I didn't really go in with any expectations, so. I didn't really get surprised that much. Uh, I definitely thought the guys were going to be tough. I knew they were going to be strong, so they met up to those uh, expectations pretty, <laughs> pretty adequately. So, uh, you know, props to Mateo on the other side of the bracket. He, he beat everyone pretty decisively, so that was really cool. It was cool to compete against him for the first time. I had heard about him before, so it was cool to face him, yeah. yeah that's, as they say, no expectation, no disappointment, right? Man, congratulations. You did a great job. It was an exciting fight, exciting final. I'm looking forward to see in the future on the next TMS events, and um, looking forward uh, to later training with you too. Take yes. care, man. And uh, guys, we're gonna see you next time in 2021 with the TMS future tournaments. Tune up for the for the news. Follow on Instagram TMS League, and subscribe on the YouTube channel TMS League. See you guys next time. to the city. Uh, no, we would yeah. love to stay here, but they're taking us to the city. Hold on, aren't you leaving tomorrow? No, I think I'm going to go to the city. Ah, shit. Uh, we'll talk later anyway. Like, let's, uh, let's hang out after. You watch first Russia. А я еще в конце добавил, так что, ребята, ждите следующих новостей. В 2021 году 